live from Studio B in the Annenberg School at USC. This is the Talk of Troy, where we talk a big game but have even bigger opinions. I'm your host tonight, Nikki Thomas. We got a lot coming up for you guys. A lot of March Madness stuff, a lot of basketball. But uh, let me uh, say what's up to my guys in the booth here. We got Kamyar Marathi. We got Jonathan Martin. How are you guys doing? Dude. Back from spring break, bro. Uh, You ready? That's painful. It's a painful time to be back, I'll be honest. The dog days of March. But we got some things in the sports world at least like yeah. they can lift my they can lift my spirits for sure. Oh, yeah. definitely. I mean, you're definitely right. March Madness is low key my it's become my favorite time of the year the lately. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I would say I'm more invested this year than mm-hmm. than most other years. I but, like I mean, yeah. we've got a team Oh, we in do. there now with, oh, we with do. USC. The members. thing is, like, there's teams, there's teams being in places. That team, that team's more than just in it, bro. No, that no, team that team is really a number just, one seed. They that, can win it. They That's could, ridiculous. They could f around and host up a historic uh, in her first season. Way Gigi earlier Watkins than we ever thought. Way earlier than we ever has thought. Put the team on her back, but no. But at the same time, she's getting help. Hosting. She Gigi is. Forbes. She is. Big Kenzie people. Forbes, exactly. Galen Davis, yes. come on, Ray some Marshall. Games at Galen, yeah, two. A TOT outing puts two, uh, two games at Galen. We should go. We should. Should. We should go. We should, we should go. We should go. We got to support. But our team. but before we get into all our basketball talk, all this 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 this, we got to pull some receipts on some people. Don't we, we do. We do. And this honest, this one's honestly near and dear to my heart. Oh, um, been it. a fan. This dude has joined the show that I've ever so loved for years. <laughs> Shout out to Amin El Hassan. I don't know if this will ever reach you. Woo! I'm gonna try and add you as many times as possible, so hopefully it gets aggravated somewhere. But he was a part of some kind of like well, celebrity game. Well, Amin, he has some front office. Uh, he's first started as a video coordinator for the Phoenix Suns. Worked his way up all the way up to front office mm. status. Has been around basketball for a long, long time. I could go on and on about this guy's yeah. story. You know. Lived in Sudan for a while, his home country. I think mm-hmm. moved from New York to Sudan, back to then America. A lot of stuff. So we've got an international perspective on that. A little bit, a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. But he he's very knowledgeable on the game. He also hosts his own show, Oddball, with oh. Charlotte Wilder. It's also, he's very, listen, this dude, I honestly say this dude knows ball. He, he's okay. a figure he does. in the basketball community. He has extensive knowledge. Was he's on the different. jump with Rachel Nichols oh, at the time. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Love, love Rachel Nichols. For sure. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Uh, but wow. yeah, so Amin knows his Amin knows his stuff. Yeah. Yes. But dude, there was a jumper, a practice shot mm. from the corner. I saw it. That it was ugly. Ooh. I mean, I don't know if that is how you shoot or what's going on. I know you've explained yourself on the show. But for, for context, I wish you could play yeah, the I was video. Say, show the follow through. Show yeah, the follow through. So imagine show us. I'm in the corner, right? Yep. I'm standing. Just pretend I'm standing. I'm first mistake. I'm, Follow through. Oh wow! Huh. See, ladies and gentlemen, if you can take a look at my hands. Yo, you remember when Stephen A. Smith threw that first pitch out? Yeah. Dog. It was like eh. worse. Yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. It was almost like he was trying to throw a four seam. Like oh, I don't something, know. Look, a look. change up something. I'm a little disappointed because you know this is a basketball head. This is a guy who knows ball. Everyone and their mother and their grandmother knows. You gotta hold the follow through straight. Come through. on, man. You Come gotta on. keep look, look. We gotta, gotta put keep... the mental back in fundamental. And All the, right, and just the, the, the laundry list of excuses from him afterwards. It's it was stinky. Yeah. It was it what was, was it? Yeah. wrist wrist injury. Uh-huh. Haven't really? touched the basketball uh-huh. since the 2017 18 Then finals, don't touch whatever. it anymore. Look, you know what I'm saying? Something people have to realize: there are those who do, and there are those who talk about those who do. Oh, oh, wow. And. You know, you coming after him, me? Wow. No, I'm not coming after him. I'm just saying, brother, you gotta. This is the reality, man. He do not do. He, no. So let me. So let me ask you guys something. Talk to okay. Me. Please. When you see, I mean, I love you. When you see this, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. And you and he is not only a credible but respected, largely like this guy. When he talks about hoops, people are supposed mm-hmm. to at least listen. Yeah. Or that's what he wants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Are you listening any less? I was just going to say, are um, you saying his credibility is hurt? Because no. I'm listening to point, him a little bit less. Point. Well, to really? be honest, I am. No, I'm not listening to him less hmm. because he still is knowledgeable. He still put in the time and effort to learn and study about the game. You said this man has traveled around the world. He knows ball. That don't mean he can play. We know so pretty. how well does he know ball if he can't play? He knows how to talk about ball. He knows how to analyze ball. Mm. He can't play ball. It's a gift mm. that many get and many more don't get. 
But it's like, the they, I feel like that you could recruit right people who do know how to ball. I feel like those are the people who should be talking balls. People so, who know balls. So this, See, you know, ah, slippery slope we're going down. You're, right you're, here. you're bringing up a good point because okay, other breaking news in the world of sports. LeBron James came out and said that Let's after go. yes, yes, you heard about <laughs> did any book? Okay, also wait, let, what? I need what? To, wait. Hold on. Okay, what what is it just me? Is it what's that Janae Eichel song? Anyway, so. Uh, is it just me or like me. did I just hear about this like maybe a couple hours like was well, this yeah, it, the it best happened. kept secret in all of podcast ever wait wait are you talking about JJ Reddick's podcast yeah what well, we're just about to get into well yes so let me just break the news Look, Los no Angeles clue. Lakers star if you don't know who he is I'm just kidding everybody knows who he is he's a king to many in here apparently to him to yeah. LeBron James is partnering with former NBA sharpshooter JJ Reddick for a new Sharp podcast shooter. That intends to be a pure conversation about basketball. Salty ass sixer right here. <laughs> and apparently, it's going to be called "Mind the Game." What? That's, that's uh, the play, name of the pod. Play oh, on, like, play on mind game. Mind. So, but peep this oh, though. Oh, I thought it was like mind the gap, like when you go, get on the train and shit, or no. and stuff like that, and they like mind the, the gap. Train. Why would it be mind the game? It's like my Doctor Nikki. Why would it be? My, but they You're not doctoring right now. Mind okay? games. Mind games. <laughs> Mind the game. Mind the is game. That, is it really called Mind the yes. Game? Yes. It's, not, it's a name play on no, Mind the, ga- the Gap. Okay. Pull up the name. Listen, you're you're getting lost in the sauce. It's I not about. It's a bad name either way. That's we should move on from. We can come so, up. We can, but bra- that's we what can it's brainstorm called. different names. But after. that's what you it's called. You don't like Mind the Game? It's we'll, bad. We'll get back to it. Whatever. Okay. Well, we can talk about it. Before the name of the pod was called uh, the the Old Man in Three. JJ Reddick's podcast. Well, I think he still has that. Well, yeah, he does. But I'm saying I'm. I'm pretty sure it's, that one's not great either. No, no, you're Damn. wrong. That's a great name, and that's a great podcast. All because he couldn't get you past the second, third round. First this is of all, all, that was never gonna be him. He was never he gonna was be that to guy. For those he who was, don't know, Doctor Nikki's a Philly fan, and she's. If Dila. anybody left in the world doesn't know that, but let um, it be known today. Let it be known. But I, I ain't got nothing against JJ. I just feel like yeah. you could come up with a better name if you have all well, that time sure. well, on listen, your hands. Listen. But let's get into the regardless, yeah, yeah. The regardless of Mind the name. Games. Yes, regardless of the name, <laughs> how do we feel about these former athletes stepping into the the media world? It's happening so mm. much nowadays, mm. and they obviously have maximum credibility. I yep. mean, a guy like LeBron James. It's like Tom Facts. Brady doing his thing in broadcasting. A guy like LeBron James. My, he might be ass, by the way, Tom Brady. Tom Brady with it? He might be ass on broadcast. But he's going to automatically honest. have that credibility. You're going to listen to what he says. He's going to be calling plays before they happen. Same well, with LeBron. Well, I think there's like low-key a couple different conversations happening here because it's like, let's have how do we, yeah, let's have them. Mm. How do we feel about like, yeah, maybe former players having pods or, you know, uh, simulcasts or features mm-hmm. or whatever? We've been doing that. But I think it's like, the players who are currently playing that's so new in the past like two, three years that are, it's like, I think the the mashup of current and former player is interesting. And I think you like, like that. I do so actually. How do you feel about two retired guys? Well, I'm assuming LeBron is going to be retired when he starts this thing. Maybe. No, no. Episode one drops tomorrow again. Oh, swear. Oh, Dang, swear, I'm, swear, I'm not in the loop. Okay. Oh. So a former pro and a current pro. Yeah, that's I like a good that. thing. I, I like that. I kind of like that. I like that. I kind of, li- I even like, you know, like the idea of having two different kinds of players. You know what I'm saying? A shooter and like a playmaker. You I know was what thinking I mean? like someone of JJ Reddick's caliber who obviously, you know, he, he never won a chip, but he, you know, was in the league for Absolutely. many years, did great things. And is respected. And then like, you know, arguably the GOAT. Yeah. LeBron. I like that. It's good. Now, the line, I don't like it when, like, you know, guys like, I mean, no disrespect, like, you know, Michael Porter Jr. got one. Oh, <laughs> Everybody got one. It's like, but, Draymond's Paul, is good. Draymond's is good. Draymond's but is only old. because Paul of George what it exposes one. about everything in the league, yeah. I feel. Yeah. I, just, I just think, like, okay. Like, is no, it too much or something? Who okay. want to hear Paul George talk? Huh? Who cares what John <laughs> well, has to say at a time like this? <laughs> I'll say this. The, the, a lot of young heads, bro, they, they rock with Paul George. Really? Yes. To hear him Whatever talk, reason. though, to yes. hear him sit down and talk. Well, yeah, that's true. His playing and his talking are another thing. But you, like, you're, you're uh, about to say something. No, I was just saying, like, shout out New Media. Um, <laughs> it, it's so funny because I remember this was all put into perspective of, like, I was watching, shout out to the Levitard show, I was watching that, mm. and then the week after the Super Bowl, it was the whole Travis Kelsey thing pushed Andy, right? And, yeah. like, he was, whatever, you have... Um, him going on his pod, Jason's like, yo, bro, you're out of pocket, you're out of pocket. Yeah. you can't do that, all this stuff. And then Stu, like, brings up such a good point, like, the co-host, he goes, like, you know, 
as little as maybe a couple of years ago, Travis Kelsey would be the get everywhere. Like yeah. everyone would be going out of their way to like swarm the like the phone lines and be mm-hmm. like, yo, let me get this guy on my show to talk X, Y, and Z, yeah. tailor this, uh, read that, whatever, whatever. Now he can wait a whole two days, go on their own pod, yeah. report this stuff himself. Control the conversation and a be little like, bit more. Yeah, yeah like, you know, you know, I'll give you this juicy stuff. Oh, wait, on my own pod, I don't actually need any other platform because I have my own. So take that. Old well, media. What's your what's your problem with that? No, nothing. I just think it's it's just so different. Like I've never. Yeah, bro. The times are changing, different. brother. And it's yeah. just like I, this pairing in my eyes. Like it makes sense. Oh, but it's, I just, it's gonna I be, never. It's gonna be great. I never saw it coming though. But like the I never standard, saw this like connection. the bar is so high. Like yeah. LeBron James cannot stink at this. He can. He can't even be like just no, medium good at this. He has to be like really, really. And good guess at this. what? Stink. Have you seen him on the shop? He's, he's a clown on the shop. No, he's not bad. He's never had lack of personality. He's fun. He's a, if he he's comes like a with fun that, uncle. exactly. But if even, he comes with that, everyone's eating it up. Because JJ even, Redick is the the knowledge. Look, I, well, you say JJ is the knowledge, but like, just peep this, peep this, right? Peep you love him. both of them, don't you? First take to me in its prime was when you had first take. Never had a prime. They had. Ah, but you could argue they're still right, in their prime. Ah, come on. Hey, the numbers don't lie. Stephen A. First love him or hate him, he's been at the top for a while. But let me say this, right? Look, the combination of the funny, funny, you know, maybe some experience Stephen A don't have, but he's, he has the experience of being around the game, right? Two points per game. No, peep, 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 oh. peep, peep. The combination of the funny but knowledgeable black guy yeah. with the analytical <laughs> smart white guy, bro, it doesn't because, lose. But like, first okay, take when Max Kellerman, bro, skip and Here's where you're all Max, you're right. You're Max right. Kellerman and Stephen A, it was there. gold. You know, we this, were eating it up. Oh, this analogy sucks. How? No, it sucks because like, okay. Just because you're making JJ insert role the white guy. No, it's not about him being the white hold guy. On, hold but, on, hold on. But, but it's he is not a white about, guy. Yeah, we know where he's from. But like the point is like, just because you see him as a max, yes. like JJ, while he's like, like, you know, he's knowledgeable about the game. He, he loves to talk basketball much like LeBron does. Like mm. LeBron literally in a preview I saw on Instagram, he's like, man, I just, in the corniest way possible, he's like... Man, I just love talking about basketball. And I'm like, oh my God. Like, like oh, they're, they're, he's actually going to. No, but like, he, he's really. Like, hey, there's people out here collecting checks. Facts. Oh, yeah. And there's people out here who let, actually care who, about let's the be game. Real. Yeah. What the, That's us. LeBron. We ain't collecting no checks. Come on, we man. We're here for the love of the game, I, hey, sister. Just let it be known I am for sale. So if anyone, okay. you know, got some money, please. We all are. I can give you my I number. hope to be collecting we checks. We all absolutely, are. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, I actually do love checks. talking about basketball. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But wait, wait you had a point. Here. You had a point. LeBron Let's... has nothing to gain from this. That's number one. Okay. Why? Well, what no, is... no, 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 no. But my point is like, like he truly, this isn't like a Stephen A situation. What do you? Where say? it's like, okay, Max is much more knowledgeable, all worldly, has an Ivy League education, like is just like a history buff in himself, uh-huh. right? Where it's almost like he's so much more, and I'm hesitant to do this, but like. He's so much more all-knowing than Stephen A. That's just a fact. Sometimes Stephen A just ignores numbers completely. He's like, hey, Max is like logic reasoning numbers. Stephen A is like, you don't know basketball. And, oh. and, then, and then all of Twitter Sorry, is like, doing it yeah, shut up, Max. And then I'm like, well, why should Max shut up? Like, what is this? I see this as two genuine like geniuses because okay. the mm. basketball, the basketball well, minds are short. It's listen, a short list. Listen, listen. It goes Rondo. Ooh. I'll even I'll even give Draymond his flowers. Draymond's up there. He he knows ball. Uh, Draymond, Rondo, LeBron. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't put Redick up there. JJ Redick knows I mean, basketball. Yeah, yeah. Man. Now, but like that's just the talk. That's talk around the league of who's widely accepted so as like the you don't best like thing. The, um, Let me ask you something. You don't like the brother combo. You wouldn't tune into a Giannis and Thanasis situation. No, no. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. I have no. Well, you're just not trying to hear Thanasis talk ball. No, I'm not. No. He, he probably know ball. <laughs> no. Well, I he mean, has been what, watching a lot. Y'all. Oh, but he's getting bread. <laughs> no, like, I mean, not even yeah. yeah, it's just, it's just like I think there's, sp- and even JJ talks about this in like a Bleach Report article. He was so it's almost crazy because all the stuff he said about Doc Rivers went viral yeah, about like him. But he's like, I, I hate the fact in this new media that stuff about me goes viral more so than like 
his the, actual analysis. Yeah, yeah. which is like such a backward. I mean, you know, I think it's a little bit of a backward. To be fair, world. like he basically went and read my Twitter feed for all that stuff he wanted to say about Doc Rivers. Like I've been saying all of them uh, things. He, I'm sure he creeping on my Twitter on a low. What? So, but let me yeah. just get this real quick. The combo get off of Nikki's Twitter. The combo oh. of LeBron and Reddick. I don't see it as this analogy, like, cause, because I really put. I them, never look. I'm not saying that. It's going to be like... You're saying you need like a straight man and a funny guy sort of situation. Or like a... Because JJ, sure, sure. I'll be real, yeah. JJ JJ would not nearly be as successful if he wasn't as like quick-witted or like yeah, he's dr- got, sarcastic. But like, he has to because it, the career doesn't give you the well, cushion to no, like be a little bit... But that's him though. That's who he, he it really is. is. Like, that he, really like, is him. JJ Reddick like also just... He's smart. He's quick-witted. He's a jackass. But like well, in the like best a, way. Yeah, yeah, but in yeah, the yeah. best way. Yeah, yeah. Like and people like he actually has a personality but that's like, like he knows what he's talking about. Like yeah, I was yeah. watching, bro. I've been I've been a fan of his podcast and I love what he does. He brings on you know pros. Jr. Smith. Yeah, that I was mean, a favorite episode. That was a great episode. Learning about so Jr. Though, come on, four point in college. You literally recommended that to me. It was a gas you one. The point is, it was a gas. This combo one. will work. And I I'm, think so. You have my I think so. Jonathan Martin, you have my stamp of approval. Okay, well, let me and ask you. You know the world's been waiting you. for that stamp of approval. Let Please, me tell you. We need the can JR stamp more, of approval. Can you give us some more, like, what is more stamp of approval? Okay, well, here, I was um, going to tell you, me and JMR were talking before the show. Go ahead. We said, imagine if. Uh, Cam Newton and Tom Brady hopped oh, on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yo. I said a pod, because right, a everyone's having a pod. of a game? I will yeah. watch that every time. Tom every Brady. Time. And Cam Newton. That's wow. so That would fun. be popcorn. It's so fun. M and M's. Yes. All the experience <laughs> they have between them. <laughs> who's who? Who's who? Bro, who's don't worry about that. Oh, stop. <laughs> stop. stop asking. It's not about. It's a question. Yeah. Well, we are in bracket season. Word. Oh. Wait, but does? I just want to know if you had any other takes in like a specific way you wanted to deliver oh. them. I don't well, know if you had any on you right now. You know, I. <clears throat> I don't really have many. What'd you say? Just a little louder, please. I don't really have many takes. I guess you could say. <laughs> but um, you know, every now and then I, I bring it up my um, my British accent. <laughs> this um, isn't a real. This what was is, that? Are we? We're on air for you real? know. Maybe I do have a take. <gasps> oh. What is it, British Jay? With March Madness approaching. Yeah. You know these I teams, like these I'm college, a- these college teams. Oh, he's getting there. They come from far and wide in battle, and only one can make it to He's the top. He's getting much are better. We in Hogwarts? He's getting better as we go. I'd say we are, Harry. You're a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> I but get you. With that said, <laughs> I can't wait. The for team this. I've got is Kentucky to make it all the way, with the hands of Rob Dillingham, the <laughs> freshman of the year. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, oh, don't decide, I'm so no, no. I'm so <laughs> proud of you for doing that off your dome. Because, you made it because, through. Listen, you made it because through. we talked about this but pre-show. We're like, dude, why would not? The fact comedically to pick the guy with last name Dillingham <laughs> in a British good? accent. That's pretty good. Honestly, round of applause. It would yeah. be preposterous. It would be see. preposterous to not choose Rob Dillingham. But all jokes aside, I've got this team. Like, let's, that's because you let's got cut. a you got a guy. No, I've got a guy, but I've got a team. And listen, man, I love look. You just love Kentucky. I love Kentucky basketball. I love their freshmen. I love their swagger. I'm not going to say I love Coach K because he's a shady guy. Huh? Yeah. We shady not even, is crazy. Well, what he, is that? We'll, we'll skip past we'll skip It's past a that. lot of greatness, though. He's done. He, he, Kentucky produces some good NBA players, man. They Facts. got dogs. Tyrese dogs. Maxey. Yeah. Come on. That's Tyrese Maxey. Honestly, Maxie. We're we, league. we could play a game called Name That NBA Guard. Probably went to Kentucky. Yeah, exactly. most likely. Most this, likely. This school has a way of producing elite guards and Rob Dillingham is the next guy and I'm really excited to see what they do in the tournament I believe they'll make a run mm. I know oh Jude in the back oh they don't play defense bro, bro, bro. oh listen, listen you don't need to play defense to that's get to the NBA oh, sister so Jude, it's like whatever Jude, I hope you know that's really what he thinks you sound you don't like. need you need defense but Jude's hair growing back by the way <laughs> Jude's hair real know, bad he got Honestly, a little fro I kind of yeah. want him to buzz it again okay anyway sorry yeah. I'm just buzz making my, my my point man Actually, yeah, no, he's talking all the way too. anyway wow, sorry but bro. why why they're just going to outscore every other team but why who, who, believe, let me see let me see who's in their way I don't believe that for a second let's see who's in their way look at the bracket isn't Houston in the same their side of the bracket Houston is on their Houston side. Houston is dog walking you respectfully. Ooh. Bro, I'm not worried about Houston. Why are you not worried about Houston? Who do they have? 
Dog, don't play this. Don't play this game of towel with me. Let's go band for band right now. <gasps> band for band. Yeah, we're, we're doing player by player. Sure. Uh, Listen, I know one thing about Houston, and I know, I know, I know. What two do things you about know Houston. about Houston? I know two things about Houston basketball. Okay, okay they've been us. knocking at tell the us. door and they've been falling they're short. They're athletic. Is, they're athletic. Yep. They'll go band for band with athleticism for all Kentucky. Oh. They play crazy defense. Mm. They swarm the ball. They'll kill you. They'll they kill you. Crazy fast break. <laughs> They'll kill you. Crazy on the fast break. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they're entirely a much better team than you. Are you done? I mean, I, th- I think so. I rest my case. Yeah. yeah. So is that who you got going all the way? Houston? Mm, no. Who do you have? Winning the whole thing? The whole thing. If you could drop it right now on the talk of Troy, who you got? Ooh. Going all the way from March Madness. Let's hear it now early. Here, sister. Let's hear it, brother. I'm going to say, go out on a limb. I'm going to say, you know what? Can I give you who can I? I'm a sneaky finals pick. Okay, come on. Oregon Ducks. Really? Swear to God. Board. So they Swear did amazing God. things in this Board. Pac-12 tourney. Swear to God. They did some good things in Ducks this Pac-12 tourney. I wouldn't say amazing things. They did some good things. Well, they won it. They, got, they mean, won. But, like, but how can you do any better than that? What was their seed? 11. Well, not in the Pac-12 tournament? Yeah. Girl, that's a great question. Four or five. They won five, five. Five. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ethan. We all had who winning it. But how'd they get the 11 seed, though, in the tournament? Because of criminal allegations. <laughs> as, in, so as in, no, no, no. No one on the team is a, a, being alleged to be a criminal, but criminal allegations <laughs> yeah. that the Pac-12 winner shouldn't be higher than 11. Criminal allegations. Sorry, it's an expression. So, I don't mean, no, I'm sure everyone on Oregon's a great person. Look, I just wanted to bring this back. Ben, ben Pap in the chat. I don't know if it's just me, but Houston being good at anything feels so random. I like that. That doesn't... What? It was just funny. Why are you hating on the progress? Well, <laughs> what? Yeah, why are you hating on the progress? Wait, what? Wait, Houston's... Bi- the Rockets made of the... Rockets of two-time change. Anyway, so Dr. Nick, wait, yo. what is your men's... NCAA. Uh, my men's pick is going to be... Then we'll go to the women's. Yeah, which is much more exciting, low-key. I think I'll take North Carolina just because I'm bored. I'm bored. And I like I like North Carolina. I always Davis. liked North Carolina growing up. But I, I'm i bored. You know, USC got knocked out of the Pac-12 tournament in the freaking quarterfinals. So it was no space for them mm-hmm. in March. No place for them. No place, no space. No place, no space. No yeah. Place, no Not case. much to say about them for real, but just as people who've been there for the whole season. This, this, and this should be their year. Some say they have the best player in college basketball in R.J. Davis. Listen, I'll be honest. I was talking about this with Ethan upstairs. It's almost, listen, we're almost at the end of March. Towards, to, nearing the end. Mm-hmm. And April's coming up. That means it's, it's Jimmy V month. I'm weak. Shout out, shout out Mr. Valvano. Rest in peace. But that means only one thing. Tell us. If this wolf pack is in the tournament, ah! bro, they're making a run. They're mixing they're it They're making oh, a run, bro. They're, they're a run. so fun to watch. They have a man built just like Zach Randolph. Ooh. And I put my I put my trust in him more than anybody. Exactly. Because in half court offense, when the game slows down and I need a lefty post bucket, who am I going to call for? Bro, big dude, big big man. I big need a, man. I need to call. I need to get his name really quick. I'm so ah. sorry. NC but that, State basketball. That guy, I, NC State Elite. Eight, you heard it here, right here, right here, right now. NC yeah, State Elite. Eight. Know, swear to God, know, swear to God. That'd be interesting. I think they might have ran out. Of, they might run out of steam before then. Well, well, look. I'm DJ surprised. DJ Burns Jr. I'm surprised nobody go. mentioned anything about UConn, but but we don't need to. There's nothing to say about them. I enough, agree. enough. On the women's side, woo, way more like interesting. Low key, I was schlump on the men's side to be so honest. So yeah. much more but interesting. There are some really good. Did women's y'all teams know here. this is the first time USC women's basketball has secured a number one seed in the tournament since Cheryl Miller's senior year of college? That is Holy crazy. Sh- Can you believe? That good was nugget. Like, I believe it was 1986. Genuinely, old. I was about to say forty years ago. Yeah, right? literally. Holy so, shit. who do we have taking it all? Who do we want? Who, who do, do we, we want? Who do we want? Do we have? Who do we have? Who do we want? And who are the who are the good teams? Okay. Who, who do you want? I, I know want you, our I, girls yeah. so bad, but there's a part of me, a pessimistic part of me, that says it's just too early and they just don't have the depth right now. I want SC, but like I see it for South Carolina. I just really? don't know who's beating them. South Carolina. I just don't loaded. know who's beating them right now. You know what I'm saying? Um. I like them. I was really surprised by the three seed LSU. I was surprised. I thought they would grab it too. I mean, but uh, yeah. I actually I don't see them getting out of that that bracket. 
whole. Really? That, that's a tough one. That, I mean, well, arguably the toughest. I mean, you know, you know who else? Toughest I mean, little you know, tournament you know section. One in individual. Iowa. Iowa. One individual. Yeah, Caitlin Clark is in there. She's yes. lurking in that. But I will take the Dawn Staley led South Carolina uh, team. So Texas sure. is ranked number four. I mean, excuse it's me, number one. Number one, one. in the one. second uh, Portland series. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, why? And Stanford who's, got who's the two. Stanford is still was. formidable. In that in that conference, like I I would still be a little bit scared of Cameron Brink personally. Do do upsets happen like that in the women's in the women's Good tournament question, just yeah. as much? Like I mm. not really right. Like favorites dominate this tournament, right? Yeah. So like yeah. I honestly, dude, I keep seeing these damn horns in the back of this room, and I oh really just, I'm, just not, I'm not here horns for down. it. I'm not here for it. Uh, my horns are down. Horns down. You're sure. not. Wow. Listen, maybe a maybe an elite sure. eight. Okay, like I don't like the thing. Is, stop. The thing is, what is our thing? Miss Hogue over there had them winning the whole thing. Oh, this is unbelievable. Well, let's see what we got. On the other end, I filled out my brackets. I have UConn men going all. No one lower than a three seed has ever won the women's tourney. Whoa. Okay, so then that does answer your That's question, kind of. That's big. Yeah. Is this the year of the upset? No, it's not. I think Caitlin Clark has to fulfill some kind of prophecy. Like, oh. win it all and she then go to the to. WNBA? I, I think she has to because, like, if not now, nah, she got to do it. If like, she, she has to do it. If she won it all and then, like, and then said, went I'm, right to the league. And then said, I'm declaring Indiana. That would be witness. Huge. That would be lit. She, she could recreate the witness campaign. All right. No, ah! what, what are we doing? <laughs> On the other end. Wait, what are we doing? I'm also doing a fast food bracket. Woo! And right now, so we have Arby's and Jack in a Box. Which one are you guys going with? Oh, that might be, like I was told, Arby's that's and Jack. A, that's they a both 16, stink. Let's, that's, that's a 16. Let's, let's, let's two stinky them. options. Let's, let's get, blow through them. Yeah, that's Arby's a 16 and versus 16. That's not allowed. I'll go Jack. Just for the curly fries. I'll go Jack in the only box. I'll go Jack in the box. Only for the sure. curly fries. Burger King and, what is this, Boston Market? Girl, I might the, have to take do Boston the King, Market. Do the, okay, sure. Right. Swear. Okay, Over Burger King? You, Burger King kind of sucks. Is Boston oh, wait, they Market. do have the Impossible Whopper, and that one goes. Bro, are they I'll, have, take, I'll take Burger King. do they have spicy okay. nuggets or something? They're pretty good. Okay, Chick-fil-A cool. or Burger King? Chick-fil-A. 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 Oh, I don't know. You had Chick-fil-A. Wait, hold on. You had Chick-fil-A over... Where's Checkers? Oh, yeah. I don't know what the hell that is. Oh, you just eliminated Checkers. Yeah, we did. I mean, look. Y'all are sick. There's no way Chick-fil-A is going to make it to my final. I used to work there, and oh, he knows I know, the, he knows know, the you know, innards. You know, you know the innards. how the sausage gets made. Oh no! Does that change? That's that changes stuff for you oh, guys, yeah, right? My Whenever. cousin used to work at the Campbell Soup Factory and told me about Lord. that. I said, Nah, never that's again, not right? Cool. Look, you yeah. gotta realize something. When you know how something is made, dog, yeah, it typically takes away the 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 joy of it, I guess, in some ways. Is that with anything? If kind you of. know, if you know how anything is done, does your enjoyment for that thing go away? Um, anything. Food. Chad hates that we eliminated it, Boston Market. By Paula the way, Paula Davis. Shout out to Everybody you. Everybody is so we, mad. I've missed seeing you in this chat. She Literally. is vexed right now. <laughs> this is the worst Boston thing. Boston Market ever Eraser is nuts. Really quick, McDonald's or Long John Silver? Dog, McDonald's. Dog, come on, dog. Don't waste time. KFC or M's Wendy's? Up. KFC or Wendy's? Wendy's. <laughs> I was so tempted. I think I gotta go KFC. The, yeah, it was did a it dog. For me back dog. The, the joke was lobbed up. Ethan knows what I'm talking about. KFC or Wendy's <laughs> for you? We filling out our it's bracket. It's KFC. Just okay. I, let's I, do that. I would have done Wendy's, but it's, it's three a seven of us, so we 10. have it's to. McDonald's or KFC? McDonald's. Oh, the Nuggets. Give me the McDonald's. Okay, fine. Quiznos or Steak and Shake? Are you kidding dog, me? That these sucks. are horrible. Can we argue why that's there no? Horrible. This is Jude's bracket. By why the way. is there no pizza in this whole thing, man? That's a that's a good point. Quiznos or Steak and Shake? Just do Quiznos name eh, brand. Sure, fine. Okay, sure. Quiznos. Okay, Jersey Mike's or Quiznos? Mike's. Jersey Mike's. Come on, man. Stop playing. Come on. Jersey Mike's or Popeyes? Come on. I'm going Popeyes. All right, I'll take it with you. Okay, on the other end, in and out or in and out is going all the way to the final four stop. Okay, so we'll just. What was the other option? There was no other option. Oh, be so for real. There was no other option. Chipotle or Cinnabon? Cinnabon. Cinnabon. I'm with this. Cinnabon or DQ? Cinnabon. Yup, let's do it. Cinnabon is making a Cinderella run right now. Cinnabon, Cinnabon or in and out? Why would you do that? And the run stops here. Yeah. Why would you do that? 
Did they really come up against each other for real? Jack in a box or Auntie Ends? <laughs> Auntie, Auntie Ends. Give me Auntie Ends. Pretzels, come on. They're fire. Chick fil A or Auntie Ends? Auntie Ends, give yep. it to me again. Really? Swear I would. To God. They're so good. Uh, Swear to God. So Auntie good. Ends or In and Out? Brainwashed by Chick fil A, it's average. We're getting In and Out, In and Out, In and Out. Jack. What is it? Jack? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Are, what? Popeyes or McDonald's? Louisiana fast. Oh, I have what to say McDonald's with? person. Oh. So you're the deciding vote. Shoot. You hold on, hold on. Let's make a case. Let's make a case. <laughs> you no, know, I'm going with Popeyes. <laughs> what? Oh, yes, really? Popeyes. It's better. That's a one and a dude. In and out. So right. In and out. This is a In and out. In and out or Popeyes for uh, the final. Stop trolling. In and out. I mean, listen, hey, listen, people died over getting the chicken sandwich. Real spill, bro. Word? No. Yeah, literally. no, I'm not even and joking. Guess what? And guess what? People and guess were trying what? to resell guess the what? Johns. Like, people were dying oh, over the chicken sandwich awesome. when it came out. That's yeah. such a good point. But guess what? Where are all those people now? Crickets. Guess who's still lining up? You and, know where those people guess are? Guess who all those people are lining up and flooding in and out drive through Little Caesars! A, Lord, forgive me. Who in the world is Yo, going to Yo, I haven't seen them little pizzas? Chat, I'll leave it to the chat. Little Caesars? Nobody's seen the pizza puffs from Little Caesars. Be so for real. Popeyes are in and out. It's, it's in and out. in a box. It's... Oh, Madison. Popeyes are in and out. <laughs> <laughs> that is a top tier Chat, reference. nobody's seen the that freaking Little Caesars, John. In and out. In and nah, out for the man. win. Dude, shout out. Hey, there, hey, for real though, there was a time Madison and I did go to Popeye's. What a time that was. It was... Did we you and Madison went to Popeye's? We did. Long, long time ago. Long Why? Long time ago. Ah, we were hungry, you know. There's a Popeye's near here? Yeah. Oh, On dude. Faith. It's there's multiple, and I would not recommend going to any of them after a certain hour. Well, they are for the final. Oof. It looks like Popeyes wins wins it all. How? Everyone in the chat, most people in the chat are saying Popeyes. Who okay. says Popeyes? Who are they? Oh, Little Caesars. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, no, nobody said said, nobody knows no, no about these Popeyes. Popeyes. Okay, I guess it's In and Out, bro. In and Out. Wait, wait. This no. is my bracket. In Popeyes. <laughs> Shut your dumb ass. In and out in the middle of Kettleman City is getting more traffic than Popeyes, bro. I don't even know where Kettleman City see is. How, exactly. See That's how my point. the ones that you don't like never even came up in conversation. We didn't even talk about Taco Bell, which Madison oh. admittedly would take to the final four. I'll be honest. I'm so glad we busted. Taco Bell can hit the, yeah. Yeah. Hit the showers, Taco Bell. Hit it's the, good. What are you getting from there? Well, let, this, let, this, look, <laughs> let this, let this, this is how it is in March Madness, right? It, it applies to the food bracket as well. What you what you think is going to get there doesn't quite get there sometimes. It's a one and done type situation. It is. You thought McDonald's was so going to make it. So who's our winner? Popeyes. It's like Kentucky's going to win it. How? Right? Kentucky and Popeyes. It's low. If it were, if we had gotten Kentucky hey, fried chicken, do maybe I could have oh, said, I yeah. Do me a yeah. favor. Yeah, yeah. Where, what's Popeyes' uh, catchphrase again since you worked there ever so long? I never worked oh, there. Oh, Chick-fil-A, my fault. Chick-fil-A? I never what, worked there. What's, what's Popeyes' <laughs> catchphrase? Excuse me. Uh, Kentucky fast? Louisiana. Oh, got fast. it. So you're uh, Kentucky okay, fast? Okay, okay no, ah! I'm just checking. Bro, Kentucky you don't know. Kentucky fast. Bro. That's the point. I feel like Shake Shack should have been in there. Dog, no, no, no. We can go on and on. I could listen. You want to spend the selection? Casey worked at a Shake Shack. Wow. Lore, how about no, that? No, yeah. I assume. No, I think he told me that one time. No, but like the lore, I could be lying. We could be going on and on about a selection Monday of all the f restaurants that should have been oh, here. Oh, we could. That didn't even make the tournament. Oh, yeah, we could. Where's Shake Shack? Where's any pizza place ever? Oh, my God. No Domino's. No Domino's. Domino's would have got to the Elite Eight for me, for sure. Maybe. Yeah, that's that two for six ninety nine. I know it's niche, but like, bro, if Kava's there... If so. What? What are we doing You're here? You're a Kava person, huh? Yeah, but what are we doing here? You're one like, of those why? people. Every time whoa, I go, the line whoa. is so long. Okay. It must be super good. So maybe the numbers don't ever lie. Like okay. people see the line is long and they go anyway. Oh, don't do. Well, but there that's you the go. same with Dulce though. I think maybe go. we're just all a Sheep? little silly. Yeah, a little stupid. Maybe. <laughs> well, I line up for Dulce. Oh my goodness. So what else is going on in March, by the way? I'm curious. Um, Anyone of y'all know? Other I than know. Madness? Yeah, yeah. I know what's going on in March. What's your birthday? No, no, no. I don't give a crap about oh, that. But like, that, that, that been there, done that. But there's something that's coming up. I don't know if y'all are aware. It's I'm very, not. I'm it's not. also very, happens to be near and dear to my heart. Talk Tell to us. me. Um, in about, I'll say two days time or, you know, whenever the first day of spring comes around. Okay. It is actually, wait for it, Noruz. 
What is that? It's Persian New Year. Let's go! Yeah. It literally translates. So to know means new. Ruse means day. So new day. Uh. It is supposed to signify the, I guess, it, because it is like we fall like a spring calendar. So it's supposed to bring like the same way new life comes. Yeah. When like flowers uh. are to sprout, uh, plants start like to grow, sunrise. things start to get green, days yeah. start to get longer. Rebirth, new day, so, all that great stuff. So we going to turn up for no ruse? Well, you know, um, I don't know how much. Well, def depends what you mean by turn up. Just have a good time, man. Yeah, what, what do you, you do? For do you sure? hang with what your family? Are there any, like, like, yeah, yeah. What's, what's I mean, I would that? love to. It's just like I was. I, I've been thinking about like what I'm even gonna do for the entire like holiday itself. Because usually, like, I think even last year, yeah, I was my first semester here, so I didn't really get to like celebrate like that. I don't know. I'm trying. To, if anyone has any Noru's plans, I can come crash. Like, please let me know. Let's go. I'll be alone. I don't even have a half scene. I'm supposed to spread out. I have a whole spread with a table that's supposed to signify, like, it's called the seven S's, which signifies, like, a bunch of different, like, a C, but like, an apple. You're supposed to lay it out all in this thing, um, just on, like, a table with the cloth to celebrate, like, you know, that's the that's, holiday and that's things dope. like that. New life, literally. Yeah, man. Yeah. You have a favorite, like... Madison said, I'll celebrate with you, Kamiya. Thanks, you Madison. Go. But, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's always, like... It's always, it's a great time to, like, just, yeah, be with family. It's always, like... It always held a lot more significance than, like, the actual, I guess, like, American New Year. Or, yeah. like, you know, the January 1st. Because, mm -hmm. you know, traditionally, like, older folk, you know, will give out what's called, like, soha tea, which is just, like, you know, like, some some money traditionally Ooh, to, like, let's younger, go. you know... I said, don't let it there's be money, some, bro. There are some presents handed out here and there, but like, there's a, it's a long, it's a long, honestly, process because the Wednesday before New Year's, there's this tradition of jumping over fires. Um, that yeah, I used to go to my family's friend's house, tr like religiously. Well, you have two days. I know, I know. To get a fire. No, I know, and j I guess if y'all want to come jump over some stuff and sing, say some chants, like, be my guest. Her. And then I believe 13 days after the New Year, Sees the Bedar was always at this one park by my house. And it was like everyone would come together, this one big barbecue. It was like a communal, like uh, kids versus adults soccer game. It's fire. Damn, it's a great kids time. was getting whooped, huh? It was a little bit, it was like, you know, spread out here and there. And there were some older kids, like, you know, as we got oh, older, okay. you know, it cool. started to get a little closer, you know? Yes, yes. Cool. Those well, geezers couldn't stand a chance. That's, well, yeah. It's a good time. So happy Jeez. no ruse, everybody. Happy no Yay! ruse. Or, so, if we don't early see no you ruse, early then. no ruse. Wait, you said yeah. geezers? Would you, um, just curious, maybe a little pivot, but would Excuse you consider me. Kyrie Irving a geezer? Yes. Sorry. You better not give flowers to that guy right now. I'm not giving. We got someone else for that, but okay, good. Did you see that game winner? I did. I was mad when I saw it, but I was impressed. I don't know mad. how. Like, I was mad. Was it like a really impressive shot, or was it impressive because of the play calling and because it wasn't where you expected the ball to Dr. go? Doctor Nikki, stop! Come on, like, are you is smoking? It, is it impressive or is right it now. unexpected? The difficulty of hitting a left hand floater ish hook. I could do that. Over Jokic. Oh. How do, you know, how do you know other players couldn't just also make it left-handed? They just never tried. Are y'all joking right now? Yeah. Dude, I don't know anyone else. Flowers? Who else in the league could have done that? <laughs> Can we move on? But Kyrie. Can we move on? It's funny. Well, that's, that's probably the greatest Who game Who else could have done it? Probably everybody. They're professional basketball players. Jimmy, Jimmy won a three-point contest left-handed. Oh. So y'all are just not going <laughs> to give him his love? Sure, playoff, hey, I, I, last time I checked, I've heard playoff Jimmy. I've never heard of playoff Kyrie. Yep. Anyway, so let's get to flowers, shall we? Shall we? Because yep. that's insane. <laughs> I got it. We've I got, got an it. agenda to push, man. I got it. We have I got, got an agenda to push. Well, my personal favorite segment. Thank you, Jimmy. Yay! Today we're hot. Oh, sorry. excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Just some beautiful flowers. What are these? Uh, sunset roses? Something like that. Yeah, they look like it. Take a look. Yeah, let me get a whiff, man. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. yeah. Today we are highlighting ah. an Iranian diver, Taiki Askari. Yes, sir. Peep this, y'all. How old is he? Just for the people who don't know. Just wait, wait. I was going to say, because that graphic looks like... He whoa. is a diver. He did an exhibition dive at the age of 100 Ooh. years wow. old. Wow. So keep that in mind. You can still do it. All right. 
you can still be fresh you can still be young the key is to keep moving never stop it's that mediterranean diet man it is trying yeah, to it tell is. so get on that kava just kidding it's gross he did <gasps> this at the age of 100 what? years old in the 2024 world aquatics championship wow love that so this this man he fell in love with diving diving as a teenager he won silver and bronze medals at the first asian games in 1951. No and you know what that translates Translate, to please listen we have a happy birthday, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we say, so Tavalod, Tavalod. That was like Tavaloded Mubarak is like happy birthday. In the literal happy birthday rhyme, ta, ta sad sol zendebashi literally means I hope you get live to 100. Let's go. Bro, literally, live to 100. out the prophecy and live to 100. And dive. Oh, man. And that to that, I hope I also get to live out to 100. He's awesome. And still dive. Well, man, that's all we have for today. We appreciate you guys joining us in the studio. We got some more March Madness talk coming up. This is the Talk of Troy. Later. And we are Boy, back after a score. nice spring break. <laughs> um, <laughs> at least me and Nick. Half, and then we're, we're adding Ethan Dude, today. What's up, guys? We're having a little three-man. Okay. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> anyway, on the screen, you can see right now, Anthony Edwards just put on... Actually, can we play this real quick? Because I wanted to talk about this Boy, real quick. Score. Anthony Edwards just had one of the first greatest, the for I think, posterizers I've ever seen. <laughs> Sorry, I, I know. I, I said this really weird. <laughs> took you eight seconds. Um, no, I, I agree. Yeah, I, we're, we're we're waiting. We we're sitting in the control room. No, it's up. Oh, it's showing. Okay, score. and I was yeah. No, that's 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 up there. I think that's I, I, that's got to be top. Well, five. so here's the thing. Here's the that's thing. That's right? got to be top. Five. I, I saw that here, Ethan, and I said I, I don't think well, I've seen he, a better dunk in the past ten years. Here's the thing. When his dunk on Watanabe from 2020, I think is what yeah, it was. It was that yeah. was a great dunk, and I was like, "Oh, that's obviously that was dunk of the year." Yeah, I was like, "Okay, it's like every every best dunker has their pinnacle moment." Like yeah. Vince Carter has his dunk over the uh, in the Olympics, mm -hmm. for example. So I was like, "That's his dunk." No, yeah. this is his dunk. No, this is his dunk. This will go down, I think, as Anthony Edwards' like best dunk by far, ever. Speechless. No I, mean, I have no I'm, words. I'm I had chills. But I, I, had but chills. I saw yeah. it. I saw it and I was like, there is just I mean, his head is above yeah. the rim. I think he like hurt his finger do it like doing it in the action. He might have dislocated it. And we don't have the video of this, but Jalen Johnson just did the same thing to Austin Reeves about three minutes ago. He just posterized Austin Reeves. Yeah, but I'm not saying not knocking it, but like Anthony Edwards did it on John Collins. Yeah. John Collins is a prolific shot blocker. Facts. Well, not prolific, but like he's 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 not Austin Reeves. <laughs> no, he's not Austin. <laughs> he's significantly taller. Yes, so that, that, yeah, that that's yeah, that's yeah, that too. I think this one reminded me a lot of uh, of Jaws dunk from, I think it was in the playoffs a couple years ago against the Wolves. Where, um, yeah, yeah, where uh, it, it, yeah, Ian Eagle called it. Uh, he said a jawbreaker. Yep, yep. <laughs> that one he full on just jumped over um, the defender. That one was absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. 
Um, I think this one tonight might have been the best dunk since that one in the NBA. So I'm curious, who do you think, and this is just this is fine because we're talking about this back room, who do you think is the most athletic player right now in the NBA? It, I, does it have to be Anthony Edwards after yeah, a dunk I mean, like I don't that? think it has to be, you know. I think you can make an argument for athlete as a whole. I yeah. think Jonathan Kaminga could be up there mm. too. Um, mm. But I don't know. It's, again, every time that it comes into question, I feel like anytime Anthony Edwards remotely gets put into question, he does something like this. Yeah. yeah. And then he just, it's like, oh, well. Yeah, I feel like we've seen now a series, like you mentioned, like we've seen a series of these dunks where it's just like, you're, you're kind of mind blown. Um, yeah, he said John the Baptist Collins, Daniel Palamore said, come bucket. Yeah, I mean, it, Jonathan Kaminga, honestly, I'd say Jonathan Kaminga. what you doing? And then honestly, Zion Williamson. Let's yeah. be honest. Zion Williamson, Z- at, yeah, well, at, Zion- in the, at the weight that he's at, and I'm not trying to like disrespect his weight, I just think like he's a bigger guy and yeah. he's still able to throw it down. He's able to do 360 dunks. I mean, that's... Yeah, exactly. When you take into account, yeah, that, as a pure athlete, I think that that kind of puts him over the top. As a twitchy athlete, like just straight up, yeah. who has the most like bounce... It's probably Ant, mm-hmm. but like you measure athleticism, you take into account every power and like yeah. speed, like that kind of thing. I mean, he's it's ferocious at yeah. the rim. So it's f- yeah, it's ridiculous because he's doing this at two hundred seventy pounds, three hundred fifty pounds. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that's crazy. <laughs> and the fact that he could do that and still jump forty four inches. Is, no, exactly. Yeah, I mean, he's so, he's. Kind of, I mean, he broke his own shoe in college. Exactly. So that that was and made their stock absolutely. Promise. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, we we had a I mean, we were just on spring break and we all had a great spring break. I know Nick, he's he's a little tired. He's coming back from you know, it's unbelievable that you were international this past yeah. week. I have to <laughs> Mr. say worldwide. Like, Mr. Worldwide. How how was that? Overall? It was a lot of fun. It was it was a fantastic time. Flew into Rome direct from LA, longest flight I've ever had in my life. How long is that? About twelve actually it was about eleven on the way there, about thirteen on the way back. Terrible. Awful. I I hate flying, and that was oh god, that was that was an awful experience. But you know, once I was there, that was a lot of fun. Flew into Rome, like I said. Then we went to Athens the next day, and were there for a couple of days, and then flew into Corfu, which is an island mm. uh, off the coast, uh, and then back to Rome. And I had another day. Then I left on uh, on Saturday. So uh, yeah, it was a pretty wild week, bunch of flying, but it was a lot of fun. I love I love how cheap Europe is. That's something else. Well, I mean, I think I mean Greece is pretty much a. Th- Third world country, second world country. So That's crazy. I mean, it's, That's crazy. it's 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 pretty damn cheap, you know. You're, I I think outside of Athens, I though, can't right? co-sign that, bro. But I ain't. yeah, it was it was not a place. I, I'm glad I went with a couple other people, and I would not roam the streets. By myself. <laughs> um, but you know, lunch or dinner for uh for two euros, I'll take that. What was it? What was your favorite meal you had over there? Oh, probably. I mean, you know, euros are are absolutely incredible. Um. So any any of the ones I had there, um, that's a good late night snack. Yeah, I had one. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly, you know, twelve one a.m. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd say anything there because you can't get that. It's it's like it. Kava is ruined for me because Mediterranean food is just not. You know, I'm still interesting. That, that's that, that, is, good that point. is interesting because I, I did come back after I had a few euros in Spain. I mean, I still came back and I, I still can munch on some kava. You know, kava is delicious all the time. But yeah, I mean that's. That's true. But spring break, either even how was your spring break? It was definitely a spring break. It was. It, it was one of the spring breaks of all time. I just went home and did nothing, which was nice because I didn't have <laughs> there was no consequence to it. So you know what? I'll take that. It's no it's no it's no overseas trip, but no. you know, I made I made do with what I could. Yeah, I was I was in NorCal for a minute. I went to Yosemite. Uh I was that's up- not NorCal. Is you somebody not NorCal? It's north, it's of, it's north Cal. of here. See, I you know it's well, funny. I saw, vi- I saw a video. I saw Sen- a video about Central Cal Sen Cal. Let's just call it Central Cal. California, Central okay. California, Central California. Uh, are we not considering it's Yosemite north, north of here? It's north of here. It is north of here, but is it not kind of NorCal? No. Again, it's north of here. It's north of here. So, so I guess subjectively it is because you live here. Yeah. <laughs> but like to sixty-five percent of the state, it's either. I guess it's a little more central, south, a little bit yeah. our our yeah. our south. Of exactly. I'm not calling it SoCal, but it's definitely yeah. not NorCal. Well, Yosemite was was beautiful nonetheless. It was cloudy, so it was not like the typical summer day in Yosemite. So I didn't well, get because it's, it's not summer. Yep, yep. Thank you, Ethan. It is squarely. <laughs> <in> <laughs> <laughs> but this spring break, we saw plenty of kind of NFL news. I mean, I I, I didn't have connection for about four days, so I was kind of like, oh, that's, that's I, was, I was actually kind of out of the loop from basically Sunday to Wednesday, um, kind of like spontaneously getting the notifications on my phone, maybe at 12 o'clock at night or like midday and being like, this is happening. And uh, I had to check back. But there's there's plenty of crazy news. And I want to get with the biggest story that actually happened this past weekend 
was the Bears finally did it. The Bears finally pulled the trigger and trade Justin Fields. They did it, and it was kind of a shocker. I don't know about you guys. I saw it. I said the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, they just got Russell Wilson earlier this week on That's a one-year wild. deal. And I was a little curious. What do you go? What do you, what do you, you know what it, it looks like to me? The the Bears fumbled. Like they like they literally they, they literally spent too much time weighing their options yeah. and then all the options disappeared. That's what it really looks like to me. Now it seems like Atlanta, considering the money that they shelled out to to Kirk O'Chains, was they were set on that was their guy. Mm-hmm. But there were multiple other teams that were looking for quarterbacks that the Bears just didn't pull the trigger on. It seems mm-hmm. like no, obviously we'll never know all the behind the scenes stuff yeah. that went on. They, but- they said that there were about four other teams outside of Pittsburgh that had trade offered a, like a trade package. Exactly. For Fields. We don't know who that's going to be. Yeah, though. but if if all you could get, I refuse to believe that the best you could get was a sixth round pick from a team that already signed another quarterback. I and, and this is what I read. So I, I'm I'm just speculating on what 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 they what they have in the okay. infor- what, what's the information it's out a foil there. Hat. You know, they said that Justin Fields' team wanted like Pittsburgh. That was their preferred destination. Right. And and you know, Ryan Pohl said at the combine that he was he wanted to do right by Justin Fields at the combine. He wanted to help him out. So, in fairness, I think it was probably like. I, I do think Justin had a little bit of an influence wanting to go to Pittsburgh. I don't think it's actually a bad situation for a guy like Justin. Why Fields. is that? Because you go to Pittsburgh, right? Russell Wilson's on a one-year deal. I don't think there's there's much thought that Russell Wilson's going to be the long-term option in Pittsburgh, right? He's there kind of he's the bridgeway quarterback. You have Justin Fields, who obviously he's had he's gotten better through the past three years in 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 Chicago, hasn't had the town around him. You now give him a team with a lot better of a coaching staff, right? A lot better of a coaching staff. A defense that's always going to be proven. And then an offense that you're going to add a few pieces. Yeah, they trade Deontay Johnson to the Panthers just last week. Bryce Young now has a new weapon. But you still have George Pickens, Pat Faramuth. You know, maybe they go draft a receiver with the 20th overall pick this year. I just think this is, for me, I think is a perfect opportunity for Justin Fields. He has a, he has a year to learn behind an, a, a proven a proven quarterback in just in in Russell Wilson. Sure, his past few years not so. No, good. he's still a proven quarterback. But he's still a proven quarterback. He's probably a Hall of Famer. I, I think this was the best spot. I think if you go to a place like Atlanta and he comes in immediately and he doesn't do anything, then you're you're back this a one if Wait, you're the Falcons. So it, it is just kind of strange how he's going to go from multiple year starter to like going backwards. That's and my having thing. To learn That's again? my thing. So because I feel like, I feel like he's only been getting better, especially last year when you gave him an actual wide receiver mm-hmm. one in DJ Moore. And he showed that growth, and now we're just gonna, you know, one step forward, two steps back. Like, but but my thing is, this isn't the long term option for Fields. Like, Fields isn't gonna be a. But he's a, a entering mandatory. his prime now. He's, like, I I think it's it's okay to miss one year. I mean, I think we just have this expectation with quarterbacks where it's like you're supposed to come in, you know, year one and, and be the instant starter. This gives an opportunity to learn a little bit more about the position. Look, we could say sure he progressed through his three years. But he really wasn't all that. I mean, sure, he was a very good running quarterback, but his passing wasn't great. His deep ball accuracy was not good. His accuracy in general wasn't very good. I don't know. I I, I understand where you guys are coming from. Like, why do you go back? But at the same time, I I think it's an opportunity to grow. It's not a confusing move for Justin Fields. What I'm saying is it's a confusing move for the Steelers to make because literally less than a week prior, you go out and get Russell Wilson. Mm -hmm. I agree that Russell Wilson... But what do they have to lose, Ethan? Barring... What do they have to lose? I guess not that. Game Justin I guess not that. Six round pick. I guess uh, true. That's a good point. It's nothing. I I agree. Which is why the Bears got fleeced. But what I'm saying is, I still don't. I guess you have very the the. It's a high ceiling, uh, high floor. I you can't really sink that low in terms of having them both on the roster. I don't know. I just can't imagine that does bode well for. Justin Fields' confidence. Like, you do well for one year, and then you see the team that's going to deal you away suddenly beef up their roster because they're bringing somebody else in, your yeah. replacement, and then you get sent to Pittsburgh. I, look, I think Fields was going to be in a tough position regardless. And I, oh, yeah. And I, I think, I'm not saying I, he to, wasn't. For me, I think he's he just kind of had to uh, suck up to that fact. And I, I think, I look, I think Fields can be a good quarterback in the future, but th- there's not enough that, me, that he has shown that he could be a starter in this league. So I don't see why he... Can't just take a year behind. I refuse behind to believe Russell there's Wilson. 32 quarterbacks better than Justin Fields. Where'd you have put him? I don't know. Not Pittsburgh, really. I again, I just don't get it. Like, mm. because yes, you're Russell Wilson's on a one year contract, and maybe if it's like a oh, if this doesn't work out, like we'll just move on to the next guy. And I guess Fields is that next guy, but you can't guarantee that he'll work out. Yeah, but like I said, it's it, to you me, could swing and miss on both. No, 100. percent But you look at the value. 
you're not you're not losing much in a deal like this. That's, you trade yeah. a six rounder, it, it could turn to a fourth rounder. And I know it's like by playtime, I yeah. would imagine seventy five percent. So it's probably gonna stay a six rounder, you know, unless Russell Wilson get hurt, you know, Fields is gonna have to come in. I, I, I see it as as a, a great opportunity right there for Fields. Okay, but I, I'm just back to your point about you don't believe he's you know uh, not a top thirty two quarterback. Can you name a starting quarterback that you would rather have over Justin Fields? Conser- like, what, like I mean, Justin, post, I would have I would rather have NFL draft, assuming like Commanders and um, you know uh, New England and. Uh, Chicago are all taking quarterbacks, so they have new yeah. starters. Who would you rather have? You mean who would I take Justin yeah, Fields over? who would you over? take Justin Fields over? I mean... You have to take into account everything. Contract. But no, but that's what I'm that. saying, though. I would, like, I would take Justin Fields... Like, for example, I, I think Justin Fields could have maybe fit well on the Raiders or something. I feel like... Because you got rid, you got rid of Jimmy Garoppolo. That you know, didn't like Gardner Minshew? Uh, I'm taking Justin Fields over Gardner Minshew. You were taking him over I, Pro I, Bowler Gardner Minshew. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I might actually have to, even though it's a joke, I might have to actually side with Gardner Minshew. He's shown he's a better he's, quarterback. He's shown like, more. He's, he's better I, at I, playing I, football. I don't. I don't know about that. Again, I don't. I don't believe there's 32 quarterbacks that are better than Justin Fields. But that's that's what I'm saying. Can you name one? And like, it, yeah, I, I'll situation. take Justin. Fe- yeah, I'd plug Justin Fields into the Raiders' offense better than Gardner Minshew. Yeah. I don't think that's a bad choice, though. I mean, I, I would I would say that that is him in a Devonte Adams combo. Be. Come on now, maybe like, him even. You, t- you want to give it like you went, you give you go from Justin Fields giving him a wide receiver one to a top wide receiver yeah. one. Like, I mean, I I'd know. even I'd even throw the Titans into that conversation. They could have gone after another quarterback. True. I mean, they, they need. I Will mean, Levis. I was, oh, well, I guess Will, Will Levis. Levis. I don't guess say Will that. Levis. No, no, no. I'm but taking Justin Fields over Will Levis. I, I am, but in, but you want to talk about contracts? Will Levis, he's he's still a rookie. He's young. You know, you got got the Titans the love giving te- giving their quarterbacks one chance, and then that's it. They did it yeah. to Malik Willis too. Pretty much. Malik Willis was absolutely yeah. garbage. Yeah. Also, <laughs> so uh, yeah, and and at least Liberty Legend. Yeah. Uh, except uh, like at least Will Levis actually uh, he showed some potential and yeah he's also I guess gonna, but he's, still though like I would rather like why would you not like here's my thing you talk about like plugging guys in letting them like sit and learn like I get this why would you not because Ryan Tannehill's gone why would you not take bring Justin Fields in and let Will Levis work with him what is Will Levis supposed to learn from Justin Fields. That's they, a great question. They, yeah, they I mean, that, that's, 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 that's bring, what I'm trying to get competition. At, like, just bring in competition. Because I don't think they're bringing in Justin Fields to compete with Russell Wilson. Oh, there's for, no competition. They've, exactly. already, they've already named Wilson the starter. Exactly. So it's like, why would you not bring Justin Fields into for competition? And then if he proves he's the second best guy, then yeah, leave yeah. him there. I mean, I'm just going to go off what the sources are saying, Ethan. And and I know it's it's sometimes, I'm just saying, uh, it's sometimes not trustworthy. You've been known to spread but, misinformation, yes. I but I'm just saying what they what, what they've said in the articles is team preferred if destination like like Pittsburgh and that that's what the Chicago Bears wanted. You know to what? Make. It's a, they're as stable as a franchise as they come. Yeah, oh, that's the that's my main takeaway. But a, another team that I, actually I want to get to this because there there was plenty of moves around free agency, t- plenty of teams that kind of got some shocking picks. You know, I think Kirk Cousins going to Atlanta wasn't. I would say that was kind of unexpected. Kirk O'Chain's going down to you know the the, the NFC South. For you guys, what was your biggest riser from this postseason? I'll start. I, I I'm going to be honest. I'm I'm fully buying every stock that is the Houston Texans. I am fully buying the stock in the Houston Texans. I think what the Houston Texans did this offseason was very impressive. They didn't need to do a whole lot too. I, I already think this team is in in the right direction with what they got. They have a young you know quarterback, a second year now. C.J. Stroud just run rookie of the year. And on the defensive side. They have Will Anderson, the defensive rookie of the year, who had mm-hmm. one of the best pass the pass rush win rates this season. As a team, they rank third in all of the NFL in pass rush win rate. And then you had a guy like Daniil Hunter on that other side. He had 14 and a half sacks last year. And he's had double-digit sacks the past four out of five seasons. And then you had um, Al Shazier from the Aziz Al Shazier from the 49ers. Well, no, well he was there line. last year, and he was on a one-year contract. There was rumors that he was going to leave, but they signed him in for three more years. Mm-hmm. I think the one like. Daniel Hunter is huge. Yeah. But now you have a stable running back in Joe Mixon. And uh, that's that. that. I didn't even get is, to that. Yeah. That is, you know, Joe Mixon's kind of been up and down, but he's a consistent, you know, like high mid level workhorse back. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really all you need. No, that's all you realistically. And because you already have the yeah, you already have your second year quarterback, CJ Stroud, who's gonna go out and you know, I mean, you're already in an air raid offense where you kind of have three reliable weapons next season. Mm-hmm. I, you got Noah Brown, Tank Dell, um, you know, Dalton Schultz. They'll probably add another receiver. Nico, N- Nico yeah, Collins, Nico I can't Collins, forget, yeah, I believe I'm forgetting Nico Collins. Yeah. That's their number one. 
So I don't know. I, to me, the Texans, and I don't know about you guys, they solidified to me as like a top three team in the AFC heading into the season. Next top season. three team yeah. in the AFC. I'd say them, KC, and you put Baltimore. I, I, that's, I just that's fair. That's that's I, you I don't know, know what else you know, speaking that of Baltimore. That's that, well, yeah, I pick Baltimore. Baltimore's my highest. Right, it's them. So here's the thing: we're talk. We talked about all all year where it's like the running back market is dead. Yeah, we saw Let's a resurgence. We saw a resurgence of we this. We saw a resurgence. And here are the three teams. Like I would say, Baltimore is my number one. Then and Derrick Henry was then a it's huge. You, then pickup. it's Houston, I, I, and then it's Philly. What's the con- what's the what's the connection between all three? All of them signed running backs. Mm. All of them went out and made a splash in the running back field. You know, Philly with Saquon. Those are your three top NFL teams. No, no, no. I'm saying like the three biggest risers. Okay, three. No, biggest no, no, no. Okay, three okay. biggest risers. No, no. Um, I think Baltimore though has firmly cemented themselves. I, th- I mean, they were a top three team last year anyway. Yeah. But now they're, you can make the argument they're probably two, maybe one on roster. Leg. I mean, they yeah. did lose. Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen I mean, is a big loss. Yeah, a Patrick big Queen loss is a big loss. Defense. But what I see right now is with signing Derrick Henry, that's huge. I think that's the biggest move of the whole offseason. I, mm. I think that's the biggest. That's my biggest move of the whole You want to know why? I'll tell you why. Because what was the what was the issue that, I mean, obviously Lamar Jackson had inconsistencies with throwing the football. He has been getting better, though. But they had never had consistent Running back play. That's true. Healthy running backs. Gus Edwards, for example, is the first one. Like He's always hurt. J.K. Dobbins. J.K. Dobbins. Dude, my fa- fantasy legend, J.K. <laughs> Dobbins. Um, but now you have arguably the workhorse of all workhorses, and that's Derrick Henry. Mm-hmm. Now, nobody really knows what Derrick Henry is going to look like on the other side of 30. Yeah. But, the, but, but the thing there's is, no reason to believe he's going to fall off enough to where that signing is problematic. And I'm going to give you this. He doesn't even have to do as much as he was exactly. doing in Tennessee. I mean, he doesn't have to no, do as much you just as Lamar to, you Jackson just, have to just pull, won his second You MVP. just have to pull weight. You just have to pull weight. You just have weight. to pull weight. You just have Would to be, you, if you are productive between, in just in the red zone, honestly. If you're just productive in the red zone, Lamar Jackson could take between the 25 and the 25. That's all exactly. he has to do. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. But I think this, uh, this shows that the Ravens know that it's... Very, they're in a very similar situation to San Francisco to an extent, where it's like this window might be closing soon for the Ravens, and we need to go all in now. Yeah, you've been falling short every year. You this year was arguably the most disappointing one because you had the home field and everything, and you still didn't come through. Mm. Now you go and patch that one biggest hole. You know, it, the, you could the, argue. Yeah, yeah, you lost Patrick Queen. I yeah. acknowledge that, and that's a key piece on the vaunted defense. But I, I, I but. I, go ahead. If it doesn't work out now, it's like, I, what, I still where do you think they're the going to have to figure out the receiver position, and 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 that's going to be critical because it's it's been something we've been talking about for actually years now. Get Lamar Jackson a number one. They've got to go out and get it, this dude a number one. Like I, I I agree, their running game is strong and stuff. I'm telling you, th- this Houston team, they're young and they're hungry, and and D'Amico Ryan's has coached them well. I don't see like if it's if it comes down to Houston, and Baltimore, and some playoff game, I'm taking Houston. I, I'm honestly take even if it's on the road. I I think Houston has in just one year. I mean, they were three and thirteen the year before D'Amico Ryan. Man, shout out Lovey Smith. And see, <laughs> shout out Lovey Smith for doing doing God's work. But seriously, I I, I like Houston a lot. But I want to get no. To I your, love Houston. Yeah, I want to get to your running back. You know, you, you talked about the running back team picked up. I thought that was a very interesting thing in this free agency. The running backs completely hit the market. I think there was they were the six highest spended positional group this year. I think there was over $200 million spent on all the running backs this offseason. And I, I just want to shout out the running backs, man. I, I just, I want to give my love to the running backs because they've been, they've been hurt. They've been thrown down. They've been spit on. People have been like, why do you even need a running back? And to see guys like, you know, Saquon Barkley get a long-term deal. He couldn't even get a one-year deal with the New York Giants. And now he got himself a long-term deal. Obviously, Tony Pollard left us, but he got a long-term deal. You know, Josh Jacobs got a long-term deal. As much as I think some of them here, here's, here's, here's my thing. I, I agree. And I'm still in the camp where, again, no disrespect to the running back, but considering the way the game has evolved, there's very little incentive to give a running back a second contract. There is. There's very little incentive to do that. However, if you go up and down the list, aside from Derrick Henry, because Derrick Henry is a pure like workhorse back, the one similarity you can see from all the other notable ones, Saquon, Josh Jacobs, uh, Tony Pollard, J, uh, DeAndre Swift to an extent. Yeah, yeah. Um, all of these backs are versatile. Mm. They can run catch and the catch. Yeah. The ones that got paid the most money can do both. So, yes, the running back market came back to an extent, but at the same time, I think it just adapted to the fact that, you know, only the most versatile running backs still got paid. Yeah, mm. well, because otherwise you create far less like value. Oh, unless, absolutely. Unless, unless but no, but that's what, like I'm, that's what I'm saying. That's the only reason the running back yeah. market came back at all. Is because these running backs have been forced to adapt. Mm-hmm. Now, now it's it's like 
it's like big men in the NBA. There's now a standard for you to be oh so good at shooting from the shooting yeah. the deep ball. Mm. Running backs have comparison. to be able to do both. Yeah. You have to be able to run the ball well and catch the pass. Like Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey, I feel, is the standard oh, in he's terms the of standard, is the, he's definitely. the gold standard in terms of what running back they need from running backs now. Yeah. No, I I think that actually holds I mean, like last year's draft in the first round, like Bijan was obviously a stud at that as well as Jameer Gibbs. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think guys are realizing that, you know, young now, which which is good because that means there's a lot better chance that they can earn a second contract. Yeah. But again, Derrick Henry, the anomaly. Yeah. Well, Derrick Henry's an anomaly, but it, but the thing is, he goes to a situation where he can fit him. That's where they need. Like yeah, honestly, I agree. Baltimore, I I don't think there's a better situation. Oh, I 100% he doesn't agree. need to be relied on yeah. a lot. You give it to Lamar Jackson and all that. Yeah, I think I think the signs were. I I do think one thing that I found very interesting this season, and and this could just be me, and and I, I kind of like the the old school of football where you know you you believe in your rivals, you don't go to your rivals. There is quite a few players who just said, forget the enemy lines. I'm just going to go to our rival. Patrick Queen decided to go to the Steelers. Jordan Poyer went from Buffalo to Miami. Saquon went from the Giants to uh, Philadelphia. That was that was a crazy one. That was I, I was shocked that he went to. Aaron I, Jones went to the Vikings. Aaron Jones, <laughs> like, he pulled the ultimate Brett Favre. Like I, I just I do think minus the the weird stint with the Jets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Honestly, what do you guys think about that? Because I I, I kind of look at it as is like I I get it. It's the money you get paid whatever. But at the same time, I'm like, don't you kind of respect these rivalries? I don't know. I know right. it seems a crazy, maybe a far stretch. I thing. mean, there are a couple instances where it's like, I didn't leave this team on good terms. I'm gonna suck it, stick it to them, yeah. and go to the rival. Saquon's one example. Aaron Jones got cut because they went out and got Josh Jacobs. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, by the way, here's your two weeks, but it's not two weeks. It's like two hours. <laughs> yeah. So that, to an extent, makes sense. I don't know. I feel like. Because I'm saying, like, the biggest one for me was, like, Patrick Queen from Baltimore to Steelers. Like, don't that you was have pretty a, funny. Like, don't you have, a like, a little bit of hate for the Steelers where you're like, man, I can't even play for that. That's, town. like, arguably the the most hate-fueled rivalry That's in what all I'm saying. the like, NFL. He, how can you just make that switch and be like, oh, I'm I'm comfortable putting on a He Steelers. wants to play with Russell Wilson that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, I don't know, considering NFL players have the shortest average career of any of, like, the four major sports, and none of your money is... Guaranteed, you're gonna take where the I feel like you gotta take where the money, especially for a non quarterback. A guy like uh, uh, his career could literally be over just like like I I get that, but I I mean, a guy like Patrick Queen is definitely gaining offers from multiple teams. So he, the the Steelers aren't the only team, and they probably offered him the most money and you You know, secure that generational wealth. Yeah, this is probably this could be his last contract he ever gets in the NFL. He's gonna take the most money. No, he doesn't care where it is. I don't blame him for that. I do want to acknowledge though that this year there was a spike in terms of teams going to their rivals. I that's, do. That's what I'm saying. Like they I, just like Saquon, like Saquon too. It's like you're 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 switching, and I get it. The payday is there. The generational. I mean, if there. I would say if I would Saquon, I would have gone to the Cowboys because you know they picked Daniel Jones over me. <laughs> I'm going yeah. to the real. I'm going to like yeah. any rival. No, I'm I, and and Saquon, I'm going to the and, Jets. And, and Saquon and and the, the Giants, man. You just they, they are a disaster class, man. I mean, they, they talk about a team that has like fully committed to Daniel Jones last offseason and now they're saying oh we don't think he's the guy and then you're you know your premier running back who you drafted number two overall a couple years ago in 2018 draft just left you for your rival like the giants are probably going through it the worst right now but Nick, i want to talk about your commanders how do you feel about (laughs) no no because seriously you guys you guys were big spenders you guys were flexing that that large cap you know muscle what do you think about the pickups i know you guys got a few veterans um but new dan quinn era yeah, no, I, I, I like the approach. Um, you know, I was sad to see Sam Howell, uh, you know, traded away. Um, but, you know, I, I do like it. I, I like I like that we're taking some swings. You know, I appreciate it. And it, it's a far cry from, I would say, a few years ago when, obviously, Dan Snyder was basically running the show mm-hmm. where we would take out, you know, fat deals on, you know, on uh, players who are, you know, past their prime. Yeah. So it's... You know, seeing just random, like, you know, we just take a flyer on like Jeremy Chin, a guy who who was who was great as a rookie, you know, had some success a little bit in Carolina, was a little down last year, but you know, hey, he's obviously got some talent. Yeah. Um, let's take that, and that just you know, I, I just appreciate how, you know, we're we're taking some risks, but it's not going to sink us, mm-hmm. you know. So, I like the approach so far. Thoughts it's on the Austin on, Eckler contract. That yeah. is the one thing I was <laughs> yeah. not. Austin Eckler, man. I yeah. saw that sign. I was like, it's, he, he should 
is he should he still be in the league? No. He should. Like he should just be retired. Do you guys slow. know that one clip where he's just like running really slow? Yeah. Like he's he's on a breakaway and he's just like I kid you, he's probably moving like one mile per hour. It was from yeah. last and, season. Again, and that's why running backs don't get paid. Yeah. The two years ago, Austin Eckler was one of the best running backs in football. And then last year he just fell off a cliff. No, he was yeah, he is slower than my grandma right now. But, <laughs> wow. Yeah, that, so that was the only thing. Okay. I know he's at least, like when I'm saying, when we're taking a flyer on guys like Bobby Wagner and Cleland Farrell and, and Jeremy Chin, like, okay, maybe there's some talent left in the tank. Austin Farrell is, com- or uh, excuse me, Austin, Austin Eckler is completely cooked. There is nothing there. Yeah. Dude, if this Absolutely was five years no ago, I'd be burst. super excited for you guys. I would be excited. Yeah, but five years ago, man, you'd have an ultimate you'd, you'd team. Be going right to Super Bowl. You'd be going to Super Bowl. <laughs> I, we would be going this is like a blast from the past, Madden Ultimate or Team. Or maybe we'd go nine and eight. But um, yeah, that was that was by far my least favorite signing. And I don't really know the point. We, I, we have an RB1 already. I don't know why we're messing with Brian Robinson. I don't yeah. want to take away carries. That well, I think the thing beast. is, like Austin Eckler didn't get a big deal, so you're you're. It's not yeah, like it's not a, yeah, but I think, I think, I think like what Nick said though, it's the intangibles there. Like if you're Brian Robinson, you see them bringing in this over exactly. the hill, this over the hill vet. What does that mean for my job and my security? It's true. A little competition. Like, yeah, I get, well, <laughs> no, yeah, but like unnecessary <laughs> competition is my point. Yeah, like, I don't think it needs to be there. Like, no, he's he's a very solid running back. Our, our running back room as a whole isn't fantastic. I mean, we lost Antonio Gibson. Uh, we've, you know, Chris Rodriguez, who I don't, I don't even know, know who that is or aware who that is, but, uh, yeah, so it's Sounds not like a, a great, kicker's name. it's not a great room, but we do have an established, you know, starter. So it, it is a bit of a head scratcher. I don't know. Well, we, that was, that was very confusing, but I do like the Bobby Wagner pull. I do like that. that the Bobby Wagner, the Bobby fun. Wagner signing is, is, that's very is fun. he's, he, yeah, he showed no he's, signs of slowing down. He has also no. signed Zach Ertz, if I'm correct. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh wow, you guys, you guys are really, really you guys are real, from the past. You guys, you guys are really, you guys are really. 2017. This you guys are really going for Super Bowl 53. Okay, okay. <laughs> Marcus Mario. Speaking of well. speaking of signing people though, um, or I guess not signing people, Jude. Um, mm. Your Dallas Cowboys made the claim that you guys were going all in this year. Um, does all in mean just like keeping the team together? And not taking anybody. Well, it clearly did mean losing, keeping and the then, team together because we people. lost uh, quite a few people. We actually lost most of our free agents. You know, obviously the three Cowboys went to the Commanders: Badash, uh, Dorrance Armstrong, Dante Fowler, following Dan Quinn. Yeah, I mean it's it's uh, it's expected as a Cowboys fan, but I mean it's expected. It's, you know, when because the crazy thing is Jerry Jones has never kind of had the mantra of an off season where he says, "Oh, I'm going all in." Yeah, I'm going all in. Right? He said that before the combine. He said, "This is the season," and you would think like it makes sense. It's your like third year now getting bounced in the playoffs by you know a team that you should be and not should be but you should be competing with and yeah. you, you want to improve your roster you want to improve your roster. Well, you were the first two seed to lose to a seven seed, so yeah, yeah. that was tough. So where do you go? Where do they go from here? Um, I like, mean, is it over? Is it's, it? O- it's over. <laughs> no, it's over. And, and, and no, so it's it's funny no, because it, it's funny because there's you the, shaved your head for nothing. <laughs> it's right. There's like the the cycle that Cowboys fans go through. So when I'm back on this show in August, I will be fully confident that the Cowboys have a chance at winning the Super Bowl. Now I'm not putting my hair on the line again, but I will be confident they'll win the Super Bowl. My problem is like you don't. My biggest problem is like okay, sure you didn't spend. This is what the Cowboys always do. The Cowboys don't have a really spend in free agent. They're not, they're not big spenders at all. Don't say you're going all in and then don't do anything. Like, that's the worst part like about me. it. Make like, it a commitment. And then yeah, it's like, exactly. It. It's like you're saying you're going to go hit the gym, you know, five times a week or you're going to eat really hot. I don't know. You're going to do all these things and you don't do it. It's like, why do you, why do you, why even, would you even say it? Yeah. Why would you even say it? Cause then you're not, you, you're just, you're hurting your own self. And especially when you have a fan base that is very passionate about a football team, you know, they're going to ridicule you. you. Then you know, they're going to do it. And so I, I once again Jerry Jerry Jones has disappointed me um for what the the 19 years of my life every, every single season uh so I it, it was it wasn't shocking that we did anything I'm I'm just more hurt that he actually made those comments and didn't do anything about it and uh it's just going to be another typical Cowboys offseason we'll draft someone in the first round people are going to hype them up and then you know we'll see if they turn out to be good we have a good we have a good drafting team so I'm I'm not fully worried about our drafting ability but I I want to switch gears into what the last block was able to do. Let's get into it. The fast food bracket. We got to talk about this. They had the opportunity to we talk gonna about this. We are going to start a dialogue. I wanted, I, I, I brought this to the show and I thought this would be, you know, there is March Madness. We'll get to March Madness in the next block. But this is like, this is what the people want to know. Give the people they, what this they is want. what the people, the people what they want to know. So mm-hmm. we're going to go kind of speed around for the first round. Get through the, get through the easy. Run this, run it, run it. We're going to start with, what is this? This is probably like a, 
six versus 11. Jack in the box versus Arby's. Dude, this is a 16 versus 16 for the yeah. first four. <laughs> I would agree. I've had, I've had Arby's once in my life, Jack in the box, never. So you never had Jack, never in Jack in the Box? I'm not from California. Well, I'm taking the Jack in the Box. I'm taking I, Jack. I, I can I'm tell taking, you, you can take the Jack in the Box. Those tacos, those tacos have saved me. What about A&W and Auntie Anne's? I, you got to go Auntie, Auntie Anne's. The, the pretzels are Auntie fire. Anne's. You got to do it. Anne's. Uh, Boston Market, never had in my life. Never. I've had and it once. You had it once. What is it? I, I mean, can you maybe you can hype it up enough no, to go over Burger no. King? Boston Market. Is it better than Burger King? Well, no, it's no, not. It's okay. Not. I'm not. I've even, had Burger King and it's still not. Again, great. again, I'm not going to pull the card where it's like it's horrible. I'm just saying it's not better than Burger King. Yeah. All right, Checkers versus Chick Fil A. I think we Chick Fil A. I think we all know the answer. That's one. That's, 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 that's one. That's one v sixteen. Yeah, that's. you have a couple of those. Now this was interesting because I think last last block really was heavy on Cinnabon. I'm not as much heavy on cinema. I think Chipotle I, okay, so here's clears that. I think I, I, think I think suffer. I think I suffer. I, I honestly think I suffer from a lack of like, um, of just like trying it. Yeah. Like, I, I, like I've had it only a couple times. Yeah. Cinnabon is like coffee. It smells so much better than it actually mm. tastes. But coffee's not bad. Depends but on how you get it. Smells it smells Okay, so anyway, Chipotle. Good. Yeah, I'm taking Chipotle. Jimmy John's DQ. I've only had DQ once, and it was coming I'm back from a Six Flags, and I had the Blizzard, and that's my only. Blizzard's fantastic. And the Blizzard's fantastic. That's all I need to know. I've, I, I've never actually seen a I'm Jimmy going Jim, John's. I'm going life. Jimmy John's. Okay. I'm going Jimmy DQ. John's. Thank you. All right, five guys, Carl's Jr. Five, five guys. guys. And then we have what I also think is another one si versus 16 matchup, in and out versus White Castle. Um, which okay, one's the one? I'll <laughs> oh yeah, Mr. East Coast. East I forgot Coast. about that. Yeah. In and out. Okay. In and out. No question. Um, let's go to the other side. You got El Pollo Loco versus Taco Bell, guys. I, the, the, okay. The, so this is, in my opinion, an eight v nine. In my wow. opinion, I think this is an eight v nine. El Pollo Loco El Pollo is Loco. garbage. Oh, see, y'all. I'm sorry. To... I, 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 okay, I had... okay. Seven, seven v ten. Agree to are disagree. You, but are you taking the upset? No, I'm taking Taco Bell. Okay. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> let's be clear. I'm just saying, like, it's not as bad as people think it is. Okay. Fair. I've never. Even heard of it in my life. So. But, uh, God, what does the East Coast they, have? They, yeah, I was like, <laughs> what, do you, what do you guys eat over there? All right, Subway versus Sonic. Um, I'm going Sonic. Wow, I'm going Subway. I've, not, I've never Subway. personally had Sonic. But Sonic is Sonic is a fever dream. It was it's fine. Like you're not a real person when you go there and eat it, but it's it's. Fine. They, they have the kind of like where you drive, the drive in, yeah, and, and then the people, people car the people and they come deliver to you on, on roller skates. On roller skates. I mean that's a kind of a cool concept. I'll give them the, the I'll food. Give them, no, the but the food, food isn't is dog even. Shit. No, it's okay, not. So. It's not even that bad. I'm not even gonna lie. So are you taking Sonic on this upset? Yeah, I'm taking Sonic. It's not okay. even an upset, dude. Is it? Even... I feel like that's like. Well, what? I guess like a... yeah, because somebody's got to be a higher seed. Someone's like, got to be a higher seed. Whatever. Okay, we'll call that the eight versus nine. Wendy's versus KFC. I'm going Wendy's. Going KFC. Oh, Wendy. I'm sorry, Wendy's. If you're selling your food, if you're selling four different items for four bucks, I can't eat your food. What do you mean? I can't. The four for four? I can't. You're not guys. rocking with the four for four? I'm not rocking with the four. So for you'd four. rather go to KFC? I want my bucket of chicken. I want my bucket of chicken, and I want wow. my biscuits on the side. I want my biscuits on the side. You it's, would. You. I feel like you'd be the person who needs the mac and cheese way. from KFC too. Yeah. Mac and cheese is pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> <wet. laughs> that's what I was gonna say. See, that's what I was getting at. You're picking up what I'm putting down. Okay. All right. McDonald's versus Long John Silver's. Another versus McDonald's. One. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not even a question. Long John Silver's. Is, I used to have it all the time as a kid, but I don't think I've ever seen a Long John. Me neither. Silver's. There used to be one by my house. Oh. That's they're, the only reason I know that. They're based off of highways, just like Cracker Barrel, right? That's kind of how I don't think so. It. Anyway, Qu actually, I don't know. Quiznos and Steak and Shake. What I've, are only, we I've only had Quiznos. I've never had Steak and Shake. So by default, I had to go Quiznos. I've also had Quiznos once. I'm going to take it over Steak and I Shake. I like the name, so I picked Steak and Shake. Mm, okay. <laughs> valid, big valid. Steak guy. Big Steak guy. Dunkin' Donuts versus Jersey Mike's. I just feel like these are two different foods to really be competing I'm against going, each other. I'm going. I'm going Jersey Mike's. I'm going Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' is trash. Uh, it is oh, you do have that on the East Coast. I do know that much. <laughs> Jersey Mike's absolutely shits on Dunkin'. I, okay. Well, Panda okay. Express first Panera Bread. And Jonathan was telling me before the show, Panera Bread has killed people. I don't know how it's much. Just, killed, it's the, it's those killed lemonades. killed like 10 people. Yeah, it's the lemonade. It's you didn't know about that? I didn't know about that. It's honestly a pretty interesting story. Like, yeah. It's because they're so caffeinated. If it's Now, let's be clear. You have to drink multiple in a day. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like you, You've got to. You just OD on caffeine. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, I'm but, taking Panda Express but I'm regardless. I'm taking Panda, yes. All right, then we have Popeyes versus Whataburger. Popeyes. 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 All right, let's 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 run through this. We we still got a little bit of time. Jack in the box versus Auntie Anne's. I'm going Auntie Anne's. I would take the Auntie. I'm taking Auntie Anne's. 
You know, I'm actually the more I thought about it, I would I would have taken Jack and Box earlier, but I, I actually I really like the pretzels. Auntie Anzis was I, crucial to making it through mall trips with my family growing up as a kid. There you go. That that's so it's, it's, it's important. Burger it's important. versus Burger King versus Chick fil A. I, I don't really think it's that big of a question. Chick fil A. I mean, I think it's a I think it's a bigger debate than you think it is. Really? But I'm still I'm still going Chick fil A. I'm just, I've had Burger King and I've whopper, just I've been, whopper, 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 whopper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's actually let's stay on the side. Auntie Anne's versus Chick fil A. Who do we got right here? I'm going Auntie Anne's. I'm going. Wow. That's, I'm going that, Auntie Anne's. I'm going I'm, Auntie Anne's. He's really on the Auntie Anne's train, dude. All right, Chipotle versus DQ. What are we feeling? I I gotta go Chipotle. Chipotle I just, versus DQ. Oh, I have Jimmy John's. I'm still going Chipotle. Oh though. yeah, there you go. Okay, I'm still going Chipotle. Chipotle. I'm still going yeah. Chipotle. And then uh, Five Guys versus. I hate that this is such an early matchup yeah. because it, it, it would have been a great Elite Eight match. It would have been a great final. If you put them on, that'd be yeah, a great it, natty. That'd be a great natty. But I'm still going in and out. I'm still going in and out. It doesn't matter where. It it doesn't matter where. I had to respect. I had to respect my roots. I had to go. Five guys, you know, what? respect your roots. I, you are from the east coast. I would take you it. haven't, you haven't like grown up. I mean, when in I paid forty seven dollars <laughs> for, a, for a, a meal, <laughs> a meal. I mean, bro, the shakes are. Fire. Oh, yeah, they're fire though. Yeah, the the sh- no, I, I, I will say that. I will say the fries. The, fri- fries. No, the fries are Five good. guys fries yeah. are better than In and Out fries. I will say that. That is well obvious. Yeah, well, okay, well, okay. Sorry, yeah. I don't. <laughs> I, got, I, Chipo- I, don't, I, got forget, I forget what crowd I'm in, dude. <laughs> Chipotle versus In and Out. Uh, once again, Chipotle I mean, versus In and Out. In and Out. In and Out. Give me five guys. Okay. There you go. You got, got five got guys. guys. And all right, uh, T- Taco Bell or you know whatever Subway or S- Sonic, which you guys. I'm going Taco have. Bell. Taco Bell. I'm going Subway. I just I have memories dude, of what Subway. The hell? Bro, Subway was always <laughs> you always got a good. Foot if on. no one got me Subway, I know got they me. changed the economy, but the cookies too. You, I always would the cookies. Always okay, got see, me. I was I was never allowed to get cookies at Subway. What? Just, that's just not what I. It's not what I grew up on. So like, I can't relate to you, man. I'm sorry. I, you you I'm really sorry. missed. I'm sorry. You, just, you missed out. KFC versus McDonald's. McDonald's, McDonald's, man, they're, they're clean McDonald's. right here. Quiznos versus Jersey Mike's, or some might have Dunkin' or Steak and Shake. Uh, I like Jersey Mike's. I'm going Jersey Mike's. Jersey Mike's is moving times. on. I'm a big sub guy. I really do love my subs. I'm going Dunkin'. It's very clear. Like, yeah. like <laughs> I'm going Dunkin'. But, Panda okay. versus Popeye's. This one's tough because- I'm going Panda Express. I'm going this Panda is tough because well. Panda's right there, but I'm I was going to say, they're going to blacklist you if you don't I'm take I'm taking Popeye's. Mm. Call that, me crazy. Okay, that Panda is awful. Yeah, the, this the panda. This this panda is pretty bad. Jersey Mike's versus Popeyes or Panda versus Jersey Mike's. Whatever you guys got, I got I'm going Panda. I'm going Jersey I'm going Mike's. Panda as well. You going, going Jersey just, Mike's? I, I'm a big sub guy. What can I say? I love myself a number eight with bacon. Mike's wet. That's what I like, and Mike's I way. know oh, she's. Are you number eight too, Madison? Oh, uh, number seven. seven. We're both club sub. Okay. Uh, McDonald's versus Subway. Hey, you got to go McDonald's. I mean, it's McDonald's. It's, or McDonald's, it's McDonald's, whoever. I got Taco yeah. Bell, but yeah, I'm going. All right, McDonald's. so read your final four real quick, everyone. So everyone. So can I got hear- I got Auntie Anne's versus In and Out, and then McDonald's versus Panda Express. Okay. I have uh, Chick Fil A versus Five Guys, and McDonald's versus Panda. I have Chick Fil A versus In and Out, and McDonald's versus Jersey Mike's. Oh. I right, Ethan. Run us your final four okay. real quick. Okay, so I got in and out obviously. Take them all the way to the natty. What, what takes them over Chick-fil-A? Just real quick. What are you talking about? Oh, Auntie no, no, Anne's. Oh, well, that, it's just the Cinderella runs out. The slipper stopped. The Cinderella. The, the, Cinder- the slipper, run is the slipper, over. The slipper didn't fit anymore. <laughs> um, McDonald's Panda. I'm going Panda actually. Even though Panda Okay, the yeah, uh, again. Well, yeah, so even though, you know, McDonald's is probably more versatile. I don't know, yeah. man. That orange chicken, that's like that's your MVP score. That's that's MVP it's of the league t- right there. It is the, that's it, player of the it's tournament. It's giving you forty a game. That's player of the tournament. It is, it is player that's of the player tournament. That's player of the tournament. But I'm still going in and out for the national champion. All right. I, I would probably have them as my number two if the bracket uh, was fair. But I took five guys over Chick Fil A. Okay. Just because at its peak, I feel like it's better. And yeah. Then Don's over Panda because. Much more versatile, as you said. Yeah, and then that's five fair. guys. I took them this far. Might as well take them. That's fair. Okay, I like. I like. The, you know, the the, the East Coast. I right, saw so Chick Fil A versus In and Out. I don't really think it's a discussion, in my opinion. I think In and Out. I mean, I I do think it's close, but I just love In and Out. I think you get a burger, you know, fries and a shake for good price, and it's always quality. Leave the fries. You, and... No, the, honestly, I got to give props to the the In and Out fries. They've always seemingly gone better. And then McDonald's versus Jersey Mike's. It's of course McDonald's. I, I love Jersey Mike's. Yeah, but McDonald's that's where it ends. Sure, yeah. That's where it ends. And then my. Honestly, my final two are two burger spots. In and out versus McDonald's. As much as I love McDonald's, as much as I love the McFlurry, I'm gonna have to say to my West Coast yeah, roots. Had, I've and had In and Out. I've had a McFlurry once because it's always broken. <sighs> that's actually a shame. I've never had it broken. But we will discuss the end of this. We'll, we'll actually get to everybody's. You know, let's get to the real tournament. We'll get to the real <laughs> tournament. What really matters coming up this week: the men's and women's tournament uh, of March Madness. So we'll be back in one second.
And to wrap up the night, we got a, a round table, and I'll just introduce the crew. Dylan, back What's in studio. Up? Casey, and, and look at the merch these guys got. Obviously, they have some favorite teams. Hmm. Uh, Jude in the building, J-Mart, Ethan, Camiar. Great round table discussion here tonight, but I, I really want to kick it off because, Casey, you had a quite a spring break. You were up in Oregon with Ben, Sully, doing the first ever... Hey, what a combo. What a combo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, it's crazy you made it back alive. To hey, <laughs> the question is... Did it get weird? Um, define weird. <laughs> How about well, you? In your mind, in your mind, did you it get define weird? weird. Well, I, I mean, it, you know, things get weird sometimes with this crew, but I, I thought it was by and large a, a fun trip. And um, well, tell us about it. Well, so you know, we got out there late. Uh, I don't even remember the days. Was it Tuesday? Monday. Oh, is Monday. Is that much? But it, but, it came, huh? <laughs> That's crazy. but it led into Tuesday, and the only food options for me pretty much was McDonald's. <laughs> Everything was closed, so I went there like three times. Shout out. Um, <laughs> Everything was closed. You just don't eat anything that's <laughs> remotely healthy for you. Let's just go with the latter. Um, so, Dude, you know, then we go to Pro so Day. Despicable. And the funniest part about Pro Day was the fact that we were like the only people from a non Oregon publication, a non Eugene publication, mm. probably. Of course, NFL Network was there and every NFL scout, uh, except for a couple, and the Bears head coach was there. The Bears. Uh, Eberflus. And so, Eberfl Eberflus. And so it was kind of funny because we were all, all three of us were wearing SC polo shirts. And so it was, it was a, as Ben would say, it was kind of a random guy bit <laughs> um, in, in the wise words of Ben. Um, well, I've never heard him say that <laughs> for as long as I've ever He said it heard. like five times. He said it like five times there. Wow. Did you get uh, heckled at all by any Oregon people? Well, so that, ah, that brings me to the next great part. Great question. So um, Jackson Powers Johnson was doing his press conference. And like the funny part about this is like this was being aired by like, you know, NFL Network was there, like I said, a bunch of big publications. And he was like, you know, people hammer, I don't quite remember the context, but he was like, you know, these people hammer me on, on Twitter, like these SC guys over here. <laughs> I got a video of it. Um, we'll have to, we'll have to like that play that funny. later or something. That but um, so there was that. And then Casey Rogers, uh, shout out to him on the defensive side of the ball. By the way, had a great pro day. Uh, he, you know, he was actually really funny about it. Like he came up to us. He's like, you know, I'll take you to the bookstore. Like we'll, we'll get you some Oregon merch or something. And I was like, hey, I'll take you up on that. I think he was joking. But I'm pretty sure he was. But, <laughs> but Mr. Rogers, joking. the worst thing you can say is no. Worst thing you can say, exactly. So I didn't, I didn't go that far. But honestly, like to sum it up, did get a little weird. It was a fun trip though, and um, and, and I'm glad I, I went. You know, I want to like, know. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I want to know what happened, bro. <laughs> I mean, I slept on a beanbag chair. Did you get a blanket or no? Who's I did. Okay. okay, see, you were living lavish. Like, so were you like, in. were you like fetus position sleeping on it, or were you just kind of like sitting on it, like, like this, like, on the ground? Probably. Nah, <laughs> those was, sickos. Have you ever seen those sickos kinda, who just sit down and sleep? Knowing Casey, probably. I don't know if you guys have seen the first Toy Story, but you remember the the little evil kid slept with his face in the pillow, butt up in the air. Loki, you're kind of right. Casey would. Yeah, I mean, yo, yo, yo. Well, the funny part was violated him. The funny part is we're driving up there and slowly. And Ben are like, hey, do you have a place to stay? And I'm like, no. They didn't <laughs> like, know that. What kind of coordination is this? I know a few freshmen that live there, and I actually did hang out with them after. But like, their room is like two beds, and yeah. like, it's not. Oh, they were. It's, it's a dorm. It's a freshman dorm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and I thought I'm like, they were no. Like, do you have that figured out? And they're like, we'll find something. And then he's like. Uh, I don't think you can stay at this girl's house. She's sick. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, okay. that's the issue. She's sick. Yeah, she's sick. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. can stay there. But. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then, it, you know, with Ben's guy was chill. Shout out Ben's friend. Uh, he had the bean bag. My feet were kind of hanging off it, but you know, it sufficed. How big was the bean bag? Like, so like I'm around six feet tall. And it was maybe four long, so I was hanging two, you know, my whole leg <laughs> off of it. <laughs> so you, lean, yeah. you were you were leaning up against. But you know, it worked, and, and and I I feel privileged that I had a place to stay. Oh, you know, I you know some people don't, and so such great perspective. You know, from such a young. When you person. think you're in a dark place, you got to remember that you know there, you, you always have a beanbag chair. You always have a beanbag chair. Okay, and the beanbag had you, you thinking profound things. Bro. <laughs> it did, it did, and you know. It was great, and and the pro day was fun. Like, it was, so how, how was the actual? Like, I was event. gonna say, like, did anyone have an insane pro so, day, or did anyone have a really bad? Troy Franklin had a pretty rough pro, no, pro day. We thought Palo um, Alto. We we had a yeah, we had a we had a piece go up about it on on our talk of choice section. So go read that if you haven't. But um, we thought Troy Franklin was pretty rough. Like his, you, you know, not everyone did all the measurables and whatnot, but he just he kind of looked. Like, I don't know what it was, fatigue or whatnot, but he looked a little just tired on his routes. His routes didn't look great. 
I thought Bo Nix was okay. You know, I know, you know, for him and, you know, with the draft situation right now, it's weird because now with the Falcons getting Kirk Cousins, it's like this quarterback Kirk situation Kirk is kind of weird because the Vikings are like the obvious, you know, team contender outside of the, the top few to go for a quarterback. Mm-hmm. They just got rid of everything. But what, what, you know, J.J. McCarthy's at play. There's a lot of, you know, pe- there's always He's panic. at play? Well, he's in the mix, I mean. Really? Yes. Who, Let's Daniels? not forget, though, Vikings no, got no, no, Sam no. Darnold. McCarthy. They got Sam Darnold for one year. Oh, my God, J.J. McCarthy, bro. Well, there's also Vikings panic. got Sam Darnold for a one year. And you know so what? Hey, they might, they might go out and just ball out with Sam Darnold. I, I think mean, they should. Give him a chance. No. He's a Trojan, man. <laughs> he's no. a Trojan. You don't Come think... Uh, think yeah, about the also, think about the he has for the first time, though. Think about the weapons he now has. He has Justin Jefferson, Jordan Justin, Addison. He yeah. didn't have that in the Jets. He didn't. I, have, he definitely didn't have that in the no Jets. No one ever has that in the Jets. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. He had That's Adam cool. Gase, right? Was Adam yeah. Gase? Yeah. Yeah. Legend. I mean, bro, I thought legend Adam. in the game. Oh, I, I think they'll give him one, one like, they'll, they'll let him start three games, and if he has a negative touchdown to interception ratio, they're pulling him. But I think they will draft a quarterback, though. They, they, they no, they, they definitely they will. But so what do you I, see them taking? Well, honestly, I mean, probably JJ McCarthy. Yeah, I, mean, no, I was gonna yeah, say yeah, honestly, honestly, I said. what yeah. it is right now is probably JJ McCarthy. It's gonna be a. I don't know. I'd rather, I'd rather I trade up to get him. I mean, that's what, yeah, I'd rather that's take. Yeah. I'd rather take Bo Nix than JJ McCarthy, though. I would too. But like if both are available at that spot, I'm taking Bo Nix. Why are you? Why I'd rather play Sam Darnold. You've been like you've been like a Hall of Fame JJ McCarthy hater. No, actually, I really don't like Bo Nix. I mean, there's a reason they call him Bubble Screen Bo. Right, oh, I mean, he's twenty seven percent of his passes last season were behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, but he never threw. Double digit passing yards to end the game. Like, yeah, I mean, that's, like that's, that's special to do in college. <laughs> nah, to throw for true. less than 100. But also, when you're 25 years old, 24 years old, whatever Bo Nix is, yeah, he's like, been in college for a while. He's like the most experienced. Yeah, ever. you're going to be very like, experienced. You're going to be, you know, I mean, JJ McCarthy's sure. only third year. Yeah, That's but fair. but he only really developed an arm ever since he left Auburn. So like, I mean, so doesn't that so say that? So doesn't, so, that that say, so doesn't that say the town around him actually improved him rather than himself? So did like every quarterback. I, I mean, if you're throwing if you're throwing 27 percent of your passes behind the line of scrimmage, you're throwing a lot of screen passes, and then yeah, the other the other 39 percent of your passes are between zero and nine yards. You're not really throwing the ball very far. You're allowing your playmakers to go make plays. Yeah, but I can throw a bubble to Jettis. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, that won't change. That part won't change. Yeah, that part you won't know? change. Doesn't yeah. mean you're a good quarterback. I thought. I mean, to, to wrap it up, I thought Jackson Powers Johnson offensive line did really good at the, uh, at the pro day. Obviously, had a good combine as well. Um, and uh, and Jamal Hill as well. He looked really. He's one of the fastest uh, DB mm. uh, prospects. So I thought you know those two as, as well. It was a it was a fun trip. I, I honestly, you know that. Or, I mean, we're talking about Oregon. I mean, that team is just stacked. I mean, on both sides of. I know that's sort of an obvious statement, but yeah. but like. You know, draft position or not, I think we, you know a lot. One thing that kind of gets overshadowed is you have these guys who are great in college who you know get forgotten or you know don't pan out in the NFL. And I think it's like it. That's why the college game is just so appreciated because we have these guys are sort of lightning in a bottle. And I, to your point, I mean, I, I don't know. We don't know what Bonix is going to do in the NFL, but you know, he's to see the impact he had at Oregon is just you know. Not certain. He broke a lot of records. Yeah. Um. <laughs> No, nah, he, he from was behind a, the line of scrimmage, though. From the behind the line yeah, of scrimmage. Yeah, yeah, he did a lot of his action. They could have won it all. I mean, they they could have. Uh, yeah, could have, should have, would have. If Cam <laughs> Lewis <laughs> doesn't miss that field goal, in early, you know. I could have, should have, I do have a, a, just one final question about this pro day. Sure. Was there ever... So, granted, you're around a bunch of NFL prospects. Yeah. You're supposed to be... Hence, that means you're around some of the best athletes in the country. Yeah. What was, like, the freakiest athletic... Mm. Thing. I like this. Now, come on, man. Wait, what do you say? Nothing, you nothing, say? nothing. Let, let keep, him going, go. keep going, keep going, keep going. I should have chose my words better. Uh, but what was the craziest athletic thing you saw while at the pro day? Like, because we hear all about like, oh, these guys are just, they're different when it comes to mm. like their physical traits. Like, what was that? What was up close and personal? Yeah. Something to put in perspective for us. Well, I think the most like, obvious thing to see is obviously the quarterback because you know the just like the the art of being a quarterback is, is there's so many mechanics that go into it so i think watching bo Nix, some of the zip on his throws was just like seeing that in person like that close not just like because you go to a game in person you it's just like watching on tv but when you're on the sideline like or at a pro day where it's generally kind of quiet it, it was really cool but i think there was one play mm-hmm. in particular where bo Nix sort of overthrew troy and he made a very Granted, did make a very good catch. It was like left side of the end zone, kind of overthrew him a little bit, but he he covered the ground and made it. And I thought it was one of the one of the best athletic plays I saw. And seeing that without fans, and, and we also were in a pretty small space because we weren't at Otson. We were in um, I forget what it's called, but it was the it's like the their practice practice facility. facility. It was pouring rain too, so being in there uh, and it's sort of Oregon. 
yeah, it's Oregon. So <laughs> being there and kind of like small condensed environment and hearing everything and seeing everything up close like that, it was like an unreal experience for sure. And I'm sure like yeah. that's something you get there is gonna be a lot different than like SC when you're at the Coliseum, you have LA media and they're having that this week at Wednesday. But having Oregon in particular sort of like, you know, it was uh, the only other student publication there was the Daily Emerald, which is their <laughs> newspaper. And so it was. it was us and them and then a bunch of, you know, Daily Emerald. The Daily <laughs> Emerald. Shout out. I love them. I love the Daily Emerald. It's not, Honestly, the, Daily, it's not the Daily Ducks. I know it's like, I think you're onto something, but no. They really missed out with yeah, this whole Yeah, I was going to say the Daily Duck. Daily Duck. When, when I was in Oregon, when I was in Oregon last month, I, I, got a, I, I picked up a copy, I of, the Daily, copy I picked up a copy <laughs> of the Daily Emerald and I like looked at my people and I was like, they missed the opportunity. Daily Duck? Daily, Daily Duck. rolls off the tongue so well. Yeah. I mean, it's, even it's even Cal. Daily Emerald, I don't what know. What is it? The go- I mean, it's Daily not California. It's Daily Californian. I was just there. Oh, too, really? It's not yeah. bad. It's, it's Daily, not bad. It's just, like it just could be better. Yeah. Daily California. It's weird. Yeah. What is it? Is Emerald have any relation? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, so that have, it's green? They have a single A uh, baseball team called the Eugene Emerald. So I think Emeralds has something how to do with that, that city. I don't know. I mean, I don't personally. I like the Daily Emerald. It's, it's, I, it's, it's not bad. Yeah. It's, it's not for bad. a school that, that that's not named the Ducks. Bit, they missed out. Bit Pokemonish, yeah. anybody? A little bit Pokemon y. Yeah. No? Yeah. Like when I, I heard Daily Emerald, I first thought of I don't know. I really You're I really, on that one. Maybe. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't that, Madison, knows, <laughs> Madison says, or maybe it's because the color green. I mean, that's what I was thinking. Emerald. I, I, I was thinking the color <laughs> green best. being that's emerald. Like, you know what? I like to overthink it. I thought blue. I was thinking I was you know like I knew the logo was blue though. There's blue emeralds. Thank you very that's, much. That's, but yeah, point, point being, yes, I, know, I know it's because it's green, yeah, but like, green. <laughs> like, well, I knew they were blue. I didn't know <laughs> no, that. No, you didn't. Well, the ducks are the ducks <laughs> beyond football. They're also in March Madness. Oh they yeah. Also, yeah. 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 And they also, okay, okay, and they also okay. think, and I want to real quick. They just capped the Bang. final Pac-12 <laughs> season on top. They the the Oregon Ducks, you know, battle tested, won the Pac-12 tournament for the last Folly Dante, time baby. ever. Um, yeah. Jackson Shellstad, man, he's a, he's yeah. a, what a humongous he's a individual. Uh, but I, but I kind of want to get into March Madness. We can get in the women's and men's side. Initial reactions. Was there anything you've opened your bracket? You saw the selection that you just said, what? Yeah, or why, maybe like why? Uh, yeah, why, why? Who didn't belong there or something? Like that? Who didn't belong there? Why, who should have been there? Yeah, why is Houston a number one over Iowa State? I agree with that. That doesn't make any sense. Now, if if Iowa State had beaten Houston barely, mm-hmm. okay, I'd be like, yeah, Houston did have the yeah. better season. But Iowa State went undefeated at home and took them behind the woodshed in the in the in the, cha- in the Big Twelve championship game. Like that game wasn't close. Yeah. So I don't think that was. And you know what was interesting is when they they talked to the bracketologist that uh, yesterday they were they said the bracket- the bracket- yeah, I, was, I want that job. That's, I want that job. That's, that's a, that's okay, a real okay. Turn. Listen, it's you missed the point. You're missing the point. Missing the point. <laughs> no, go ahead, they go ahead, said yeah. the conversation was about whether Tennessee should be that last oh, number one crazy. seed. Not even Iowa State. I agree with that. I said, Tennessee no, but tough, I, okay, okay, so here's my thing. Here's my thing. Why, I think two, here's, so, I agree that Tennessee should have a claim for that spot, but I think Iowa State has a bigger claim. So with that logic, maybe Purdue doesn't deserve to be a one seed either. Mm. I don't think they deserve to I be a one Arizona's seed. I think Arizona's the worst two seed. I, I think what like, we're going to see who is- Who would you sub instead? Instead of Arizona. You're putting me on the spot, but like, I, I don't know. I, I think- you know, because you can make the claim Creighton could be up there hey, too. Tennessee, I, yeah. I, I don't think Tennessee deserved to even touch number one spot. If we're, if you want to talk about teams that got blown out, I mean they got blown out by Mississippi State, the ninth seed, the ninth seed in the SEC. Uh, yeah, and the quarterfinals it, by basically twenty. No, I agree. I'm not so that, but that's what I'm saying though. That's how I feel like the, on the on the other side with the women's tournament. I feel like they got more or less everything right. Yeah. yeah. But on the men's side, ah, there's just a lot like. I get Oregon didn't have the best season. I think it's because there's more wanna... disparity on the women's side, I feel like. I feel like there's like there's echelons of teams more. Whereas no, but I, I agree. I, but I still think when when everything comes down to it, everybody falls in the line more or less. I feel like there's, cl- again, a lot of it is subjective, but I think it does get to a point where there's clear like, oh, this team's here and that team's there. This team's higher than, like, mm-hmm. like when you beat a team fair and square, like what Iowa State did to Houston, shouldn't that give you and it's not like Iowa State has like a is like a random res. Did like they a random win up to team. go to the Big Twelve championship? That was a that was the Big Twelve yeah, championship. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, that was beat yeah. them by twenty eight points. Yeah. And it's not like Iowa State was like the random because team that no, made no, a no. run. Iowa State they were the second seed, and again they went undefeated. I agree at home. with you. I think, I think, I think North Carolina and uh, North Carolina State, like that NC that, State, NC State is interesting because like I don't know, like you brought up a good question because you think like your whole season should come down to like this. Your whole season, meaning your seeding in March Madness, should come down to that one game. 
to like the last to the well, to the here's tournament what I mean. well, no. to the, I think to the when you're conference on, championship. I think when you're on the no. Well, here's the thing. I, I think you have to look at the full resume at work. I, 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 I agree. I, I, no, I team. agree. I agree. But what that shows you is that when it matters most, you didn't come through. He's and what's what? Finger. And what's the tournament no, all agree. about when it matters most? No, and I agree. Now, am I saying Houston's going to lose round one? No, I think they'll make a run. But I think when push comes to shove, I think they showed you they're pro, they're they're a lot weaker than people thought they were. Yeah, I I, I think the only one seed that truly solidified themselves was UConn. I, I yeah, just, they actually I, won their yeah, And that's what I mean. Like I, I think we're going to see a lot of these one seeds and even two seeds. Like I'll tell you right now, and, and it, it obviously it probably won't happen. Long Beach State very well could be there. So. <laughs> I'm going to hey, put it in no, the group chat. I'm going to stay, yeah, yeah. stay on that train. I've, I literally watched Long Beach State. I mean, obviously it was against USC, but it was Bronny's debut. They came into that building with absolute confidence. Punched okay. them in the mouth. I will, I, I will yeah. say, I, smacked us. And, and, I'll, yeah. and I'll give you this. Arizona... They haven't been playing good ball nope. in the month of March, and that's they've been worst, turning the ball worst over. Time to they play haven't bad been ball. shooting the ball well. Nope. And defensively, they're letting dudes just go on them. Exactly. And they're inconsistent. And they're inconsistent. Yeah. And, but that's every year with her. I, yeah. I will. <laughs> I will. I will say this though. Yes, you're, you're. You're absolutely right. It shouldn't come down to that just one game. But I do think conference tournaments are a very big, uh, like, diagram to show what a team's projection is, and I think it can. It shows glaring flaws that, you know will become even more apparent when a team inevitably it's loses in the tournament. Sort of connecting to our own lives, because obviously USC isn't in it. Do you guys have a team like every year, maybe even before college, you guys have like rooted for? On the it? men's side, no. Women's side, yes. Uh, only UCLA. Connecticut. I'd say only on the men's side, UCLA. UCLA for men's. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Oregon? And Oregon, wow. I'm telling you, bro, they've done nothing but disappointed me all my entire life. Well, at least they won the Pac-12. At least they won the Pac-12. At least, at least, at least, at least hey, every, nobody could take that from them. Every si in the last, in the last <laughs> yeah. year, too. Yeah. Every, every single year, the only thing I've seen is like, They'll always okay. They'll either be high. I remember like Dylan Brooks. Funny enough, shout out <laughs> to him. <laughs> shout out to bro. He Dylan Crooks in college. He, uh, dude, he they were ranked high. I think they were like a top four, four or fifth seed or something like Peyton going Pritchard, into the tournament. Man. Oh yeah. Oh, dude, yeah, I'm Peyton. dude. Those are the days, dude. There was like Jordan Bell came from that squad. Chris Duarte. Warriors legend. Duarte, Duarte. like Duarte, Duarte came from there. Like, oh, dude, Hoopers, the, I don't know. Hoopers, the list, Hoopers like the list, really goes on and on. And for whatever reason, I used to think the same thing about Bayheim. You get Bayheim or Dana in the tournament. I don't care how low that's they facts, are. That's facts, actually. That's facts, I don't actually. care how low they are. Like, they could be seated anywhere from 12 to 3. They're making a that, run. That Syracuse run to the Final Four when they were 11 seed literally, Every fed, time. literally fed my family. Was, like, I, we, was, we, <laughs> was I surprised? I was Can't say, say like, I was. Is there like a favorite March Madness team or run that you guys remember? <laughs> it's It's got to be. I don't know. Like... Recently, Recently I'm the Syracuse, the Syracuse I'm run, say, the Syracuse I, run from the 11 seed to the yeah. Final Four was oh, a lot of fun. What a beautiful time! UMBC that, that, beating uh, Virginia. I'm gonna that say run St. Peter's, man. St. Peter's, I was yeah, Saint, yeah. fully Doug Eater, invested. Doug Eater. Yeah. What, was that, what was the coach's name? Well, Doug, um, um, what was the name? He oh. went to uh, Seton Hall. I don't know, but he dipped right after. He dipped right after. I mean, bro, he got the, he got <laughs> a better job. But that's the cool thing. <laughs> not gonna play him. He got no, the I'm money. Everyone transferred. But that's the cool thing. Like all these small schools. Like I'm a St. Mary's fan. I've been to St. Mary's fan my whole life. Yeah. Oh, Shaheen Holloway and. Sure, you know, I think yeah. so, small, yeah. unlike football, unlike pretty much any other college sport, you can, you can make a run. I mean, you can be a small school, with limited funding, and make the the big dance yeah. nationally. Just, these kids, I mean, St. Peter's, these I kids think. have never been. Te some of these kids have never been televised before. They go to. You know, I like the Oral Roberts run. Yeah, yeah that was fun. Yes, was that was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Nah, low key though. Listen. Real hoopers know Talk Florida Gulf Coast. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When you're dunking on literally on every Can we get that FAU last year. Back? FAU, FAU, FAU last year was, last year was good. FAU, 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 FAU was uh, fun. last year. You know what's interesting is that, and maybe this is swaying my my bracket this year. Last year was this weird like, like you didn't know who was gonna be there. Yeah. Everybody was like, oh, the, the tournament's open. Everybody's like, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever, whatever. But yeah. it really was open. Like, nah, nah, nah. Mm. stop that. What are you talking about? <laughs> UConn <laughs> was that. running through everybody. No, but I'm saying like. Because Outside like the other UConn, top, yeah. the top seeds were like were dropping oh, like okay. flies. Okay, yeah, like, Purdue. Yeah, well, Arizona. Purdue was hilarious. Like, <laughs> <laughs> bro, but that's such a true. Like, there's also but the you, beauty. You hear about that, but it actually happened last year. It, like, here's my thing. This year, we didn't. We never really had a consensus number one. Yeah, Houston for a little bit. Purdue, UConn. Right yeah, now, there was no clear cut. My team. question to you guys Kentucky, is: Kansas. Are we gonna? Is this? Are, a, are we gonna see that again? I.e., the tournament's wide open for anybody. Mm -hmm. And B, is this a trend that we're gonna see more of? There's yes, I, I mean, I, I, yeah, you go, you go. 
Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, I mean, you're probably going to say the same thing. I just, I, I think the talent has just gotten better across. Yeah. Like all, all conference of basketball, especially mid major and lower uh, major, you know, Division One basketball schools. Yes. And and I, I look at a team, and I, I don't think they're going to go very far, but New New Mexico State, man. Lolo's they they got a, they're, they're guard play. Jalen House. Jalen House, Donovan Dent. They also, I, I don't want to disrespect, they have another great guard on that team. I just, I think you look at a team like New Mexico State, who the only time I've ever heard of New Mexico State, and I've said this before, is when they're getting blown up by 50 to Alabama in football. That's the only time I've ever heard of. New Mexico State, <laughs> but you have teams like that. Oh, I'm sorry, but like they're going to beat Clemson, I, they, and they're favorites to beat Clemson. So yeah. I think yeah, you I have see, them in the Sweet 16. yeah, you see the town. Wow. Well, I brought this up earlier. Wow. I think in, what, wow. what, what, what different than beating Baylor? Dude, I'm losing my mind. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, dude, don't even ask me where I left where NC State ends on my. <laughs> I brought this up earlier, but I think in, there's a lot more parity in men's basketball than a lot of people think. I think like. Yeah, Shoot. but and you would I mean, argue, but it's it's very clear that it's more so this year and last year than yes, ever before. Yes, I meant right now. Why? Right now, because like you because said, the Dukes, Dukes, everybody, everybody's Dukes, catching up. Duke's best player is a Flipkowski. Bro. Yeah, think like, about it. He's not gonna like <laughs> this draft. That's not, it's not Zion anymore. Also, you know? think like, about it's it. Not, you know? past, this this year's draft, and you could argue last year's draft, of, like from NCAA players alone. Yeah, it's really not not to say these players aren't good, but because the talent is so close together, it hasn't diverged a lot. It's making it so the drafts are hard. It's harder for teams to scout, and they're going off of analytics alone, which is why we're seeing these less. We're not seeing Zion's right now. We're not seeing these bona fide number ones that aren't overseas. But is it maybe because they don't exist? There's good. I mean, I, I think, think, I think that's like, a good question. So, yeah. I mean, well, I, well, I, I think like, that's a good question. It's a good, point. It's a good is point. Is it any coincidence that? Like the the best player from last year's draft is from overseas. I mean, granted, he's generational. I mean, he's generational. But I think he comes around once every twenty but years. I also but. think that's just. I, but it was I mean, Caliban Carroll the year before. I mean, yeah, I, I think yeah. it's just what we what we're gonna see, and we've talked about it plenty on the shows. It's the trend. Like the, the Europeans are honestly gonna take over the next twenty years in basketball. And, and, and it, mm, <laughs> I don't know. I, I just I, I'm sorry. I see it that going that way. As maybe not like, take over. Yeah, but maybe not take over. over. No, they will be the best players though. But they'll be the best. Well, well, isn't you're, that you're, just the same thing? What? Well, no, because they won't be the majority in the league. Oh, I no, mean, I, I guess it depends on what you mean a, by takeover. He's on to something. They already kind of are. Yeah. But I think like, they're taking... Ahead. I mean, you look at these top players right now. I mean, all of them are European. And I, I think to Casey's point, we're, we're seeing like college basketball where... This was my biggest problem watching the conference tournaments. These dudes, some of them just can't run an offense. Yeah. And the other thing is they can't make free throws. I'm watching <laughs> yeah. these college kids, and I understand there is pressure. And I'm not saying Shout like, out USC basketball. I'm saying if I was going up there, obviously <laughs> I would be pressured. And there's like, you know, you got thousands of fans yelling at you. But you're a college athlete. You're a D1 athlete. It, you're NIL. making some money. <laughs> you got to make some free throws. You talk about that <laughs> NC State-Virginia game. Virginia could have won that game if they just made free throws. But it starts... You, that that, that yeah. guy didn't... Eat, that, the NC State player who hit the three, and it was a remarkable three. I mean, got to give him credit. And, you know, NC State's had a you know five wins in five days. It was super impressive. But that play just never happens if you don't make free throws. It starts... Well before they get in college, it's how this the AAU is now. Talk to me. That's what it really. Is. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that's that's what it is. I that's mean, that's what it is. Literally, what it really is. AAU basketball has ruined the the, the youth game right now. It's, it's, it's Jamal stinking. Crawford said that the other it's day. It's less about fundamentals. Yeah, it's less about fundamentals. Said it before so he passed. Ball. And and that's what you see with teams. And I'm sorry to diss your team, but that's what you see with Kentucky. <laughs> that, that, they are an <laughs> AAU basketball team, and that that's is why crazy. NC State is being them in the round of 32. Go Cats. Stop it. You I like to don't even team, ask me where I put NC State. Dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> out of boy. Come on now. For Jimmy V. Right, so, real proud. quick, I, I, I know it's early and it's Monday, and the bracket will. So many, we're all gonna like have we, like we're we're every every day we're gonna wake up and be like, man, that team should. I'm gonna wake up late. My bracket's already gonna be broken. Yeah, right. We're gonna wake up, but we'll start with Dylan. Dylan, what is the team right now you are most confident going into this tournament saying they're gonna win a national championship? You're asking the guy with the least amount of March Madness. Nah, but you know what? I'm not gonna lie. It's always, the, 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 it's always people like you who always guess it right. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's remember what I'm saying. something. That's the biggest advantage remember you have. Something. Remember something. Whoever tells you, the bracketologist. Yeah. Hold on. Where did you get? Wait, where, where did no, you get this take from? By the way. No, no. Where, I, where, I, give credit, where, where did you, you get this take from? By the way, before. Self said it. If anyone is trying, no. Matter of fact, you say it. This is your take. I'm not even gonna say it. This is you. I, I'm just gonna recycle the hits from last year. If anybody ever tells you there and college basketball expert go ahead dylan you have permission from me myself <laughs> yeah. slap them across the head I appreciate because they're a liar it. there's no such thing there's no such thing <laughs> as Especially a bracket 
There's no, no yeah, more yeah, such thing. You just get paid so, money to guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We could all game. we could all be on CBS tomorrow yeah. and do all those things. I get a big. We're old doing it right now. We're doing it right now. But yeah. there's someone that you feel yeah. confident. I'll, I'll take the easy way out. I'll go with UConn for okay. repeat champs. You I'm know, we Stetson. haven't seen it. Okay, since Florida, of course. But uh, like <laughs> you said, the only one, the, the conference champion, the one seed, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like they got what it takes, and you know, from my limited knowledge, right? I feel like they can do it. All right, I fully respect. That. I like that. I've been. I talked about them on the the Friday show a few weeks ago, and I know it's not the best timing because I did have some bad losses, but Tennessee. I've been a fan of them all year. I they think have the like, best player in college ball. Yeah, and I think I'm, I think one thing, because you talked about running an offense, I think they can do that a lot better than most teams. I also think they're a lot more of a complete team than the Kansases and some of the other Blue Bloods that, are, you know, that we've talked about. But I do acknowledge they have you know a lot of ranked losses. They had a three-game losing streak, Purdue, <laughs> Kansas, North Carolina, all of whom are ranked. Oof. They also got uh, they lost unranked Mississippi State, and uh, but they did beat Kentucky. They have some good wins, and they're also in a, an SEC. Sorry, man. Uh, but I do think ten, I, I've been riding with Tennessee all year as my my sort of bandwagon, and I, I want to take the Vols, and I have St. Peter's ironically first game, so yeah. they should win that. Yeah, they hey, should. You know what? I'm, I'm taking should. Tennessee in that first round, but I really want to see a St. Peter's upset. Would, not 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 for your, but like honestly, yeah. just to see St. Peter's do it again. I, I agree. It would be with cool. a brand new <laughs> roster. Yeah, I got to be honest. I. <sighs> I don't want to sound like, you know, just like, oh, I, you know, I'm picking the one seeds. But, man, I, I watched this UConn team through the Big East tournament. And I, to be honest, the Big East got completely disrespected in this tournament. I think there's a mm. lot more teams that deserve to be in. Seen Hall was one of them. I, I just think the Big East is probably some of the best basketball. I mean, they play in Madison Consistent Square. Consistent basketball. They play in Madison Square Garden for their, like, their conference tournament. That's so awesome. it's, it's literally electric every single game. Um and this UConn team, I mean, they, they've they've been tested. They they got tested the tournament. St. John's gave them a good fight. Uh, Marquette gave them a good fight. But uh, Tristan Newton, he's a proven you know uh, proven point guard. And then they got Donovan Klingon downside. I, I just it's gonna be tough for me to see a team really upset them. I think it's gonna be tough with Iowa State and them. But I I, I gotta take UConn. Look, I've been raving about this team uh -oh. for a while now. Raving. Maybe people are tired of hearing me, so I'll keep it short. Kentucky basketball. In Rob Dillingham, we trust. You know what? I Guard do, University, baby. The, the one thing I'm going to give you right here, oh. I'm going to be interested. So I don't know if you guys saw, but there were six players in college basketball that got this Skims, like, sponsorship. <laughs> no, they got this Skims sponsorship. Yes. So Jared McCain, Donovan Klingon. Of course, uh, Jared McCain. Why why is why is why the why is that is the least surprising <laughs> shit you why said. Why wouldn't it be Hunter Dickinson? Huh? Hunter he's Dickerson. not saying he's not deserving. He's just yeah. saying yeah. not surprised. Hunter Dickerson. <laughs> Uh, Caleb Love, some guy hold on, from hold on, hold on. the the uh, the ex Michigan Center. Yeah, Kansas. Dickinson. Yeah, he got one. He, Stop. And then it. Rob Dillingham was another. So I'm curious how far these guys might go. Maybe this there's a is curse. the story maybe a, a right new here. Curse. Maybe there's a new Kim K curse. You know, well, we already have the Drake Houston. There's the Drake curse. curse. Well, I was just saying, Drake Houston is in the house. Shout out Houston. Shout out the Houston. The voice of all. Houston is. Houston's losing in round two. Kentucky all the way. You said that. You got a feel for the curse, man. I think they they are the most explosive offensive team in college basketball. And this is an offensive basketball game we play nowadays. So Word. I'll say yeah. this. I'll say this. <laughs> I'm waiting for Ethan. <laughs> if the Iowa State Cyclones can beat UConn in the Elite Eight, they will win the national mm. championship game. Ooh. That's a fact. Put it down right now. That's a fact. Mm. I, I, th now, that's a big if, if they can beat them. But I said, yeah. Iowa State has a, has a proven track record. Like I said, they just blew out what at the time was the number one team in the nation. Mm -hmm. And they didn't lose a game at home. Now, home losses doesn't really matter as much because it's a neutral. It's a neutral sites the, on the tournament, but that proves that they can come to play when it matters. Like the last home game of the year, they came back from down double digits against ranked BYU. Yeah, like that. This is this is a team that is very proven that shoots the ball very well. They're three so I shoots, think right. I think if they're gonna beat UConn, they're gonna have to outshoot them. Yeah, but they've done that to so many teams already. It's like, why can't they do it to them? That'll be honestly, if it comes down to UConn, Iowa State in that Elite Eight matchup, that is gonna be fun. Go I 100% agree. Ah, it's gonna be fun. I, I 100%. So that's what I'm saying. If they can't, if they can't beat you, if they can't beat you, I think whoever wins that matchup is gonna win the national championship. Yeah. So I'm kind of double dipping here, but I, I believe in Iowa State. I love, I love a good. So double anyone coming dip. out of the East is gonna win for you. I believe that. Yes. And Camiar, since you love March Madness so much, and you love just like picking winners. The thing of, is, I of really, games. the thing is, I really do like <laughs> love. I really do love March Madness. Like this stuff used to be my like. I just haven't had. I'll be honest, America. Dude, I remember watching it in high school. That's what I'm saying. Like, I can remember like when watching it on my, on my computer in class. In class, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Vividly. yeah. When I knew more about some teams, when I knew more about like certain players, dude. Right now, like, 
I forgot Jared McCain is in college right now. Well, how could you forget? He's on TikTok all the time. No, but that's the thing. I just still <laughs> see him as a high, I just knew him as a high school phenom still. But I'm saying. like, I forget yeah. that he's playing right now also, yeah, actively. This, this is the age where we're about to see these players who are like our age and younger. But they're no, actually dude, younger. That's Bing, weird. No, that's weird. I'm 21 years old. Seeing people younger than me like be hoop stars, they like I'm Bing, like, bro. even me, man. I feel old. Like, even me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> even me. <laughs> I'm older than What are you talking about? You're 16. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's happening, guys. But Wait, continue. so we didn't yeah, we didn't yeah. hear your sorry we didn't hear your yeah, don't worry you're not missing much. Um, <laughs> but a winner, bona fide winner, Who you got? all the thing, whole thing. Yeah, you got UAB. Nah, don't be ridiculous. don't be ridiculous. Don't be Honestly, ridiculous. that that you got the ducks, Honestly, the daily ducks. <laughs> the daily no ducks. The du hey, ducks going to the final four. Lock that in right now. Okay. Nafali Dante. Dude, I got, look at the camera and say that. Which one? That one right there. Ducks final four. <laughs> Do you want me to say it? Doug's Final Four. Do it for the Pac-12, baby. Do it for the Pac-12. Yeah, honestly, sure. honestly the Pac if I had to pick a Winsky, a Winsky. I'm going to go... I'm going to go Houston. Mm. I really am. Mm. I'm going to say they're going to rematch Iowa State. Yeah. Two weeks yes. ago, I would have agreed with you. Brother, they got the Drake curse now. Two weeks ago, I would have agreed. I mean, it could have been worse. You could have picked Purdue. Listen, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> hey, dude, it's entirely possible. You can call me a fool, it's but a, I'll never pick Purdue. It's entirely possible Purdue loses round two to TCU. Dog, it's entirely oh, possible Purdue one. loses <laughs> extremely one, early, yeah. as they always do. What a, okay. I will never so you're try. So you're going Houston. Dog, I am, yes, I am going Houston. But if, if Purdue wins a national championship, I'll do something. What? I don't know what no. I'm going to okay. oh, 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 yeah, okay. If oh, you oh. want me to bet the field of Purdue, I'm betting the Milk field a hundred thousand. Milk mile. 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 Okay, Dylan, basically the milk mile is... Yes or no, yes or no. Yes or no. Can I explain to him Could first? Yeah, then, okay. Hey, that man shaved his head. Okay, just let me... The man asked the question. I'm just going to explain Tell him the milk mile. The milk mile is... For every lap, so you run a mile in total. Mm. Every lap you run after you, so starting for the first one, after how much do I have to down? Half is this all explanatory? You drink a milk? Is it gallon a gallon of laps? laps? Dude, stop. No, no, That's no. I possible. thought it was a gallon total. Yeah, gallon actually. total. So you probably drink like yeah. how many laps is that? Like four laps out there? It's four laps. So, so, so basically a fourth of a gallon every time you finish a lap. Yeah. A quart. A quart. A quart. Oh. Hey, Got good math. So, so okay. So, so are you willing to say? Are you willing to say on show, on live right now that if Purdue well, live wins a national championship, <laughs> you will do the milk mile? Say it right now. Okay, say it right now. Does it have to be a quart or hey, just a big red solo Stand cup? on business, bro. No, no, no. We'll work out the logistics later. No, it's I'll the it. milk mile. You got to finish the gallon before the mile's over. That's it. You can figure out how you like want to drink. Oh you can figure out how you want to drink it. Whatever you want to do. Time limit. Or no, just no, there's wait, no time. Is it last time? Three milk or is it real? Is it all? Are you willing to say right here on it's, air that you will do a milk mile? Hey, 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 we gotta do a real, real milk mile. Yeah, you do it for real, Caviar? A you ready gallon? for this? Are you ready for this? <laughs> you have 10 minutes anyway, to write the entire gallon and then 10 minutes to run the mile. Oh, that's. Oh, that's that's ten and ten. Dude, that's, okay, Actually, that's, you will for sure throw up. <laughs> well, you will yeah. for sure. The thing throw is, up. you know what I've done? I've Wait, done hold it. up. You're giving up ten minutes to run. Here's the thing. Up. Here's the thing. For those of you who don't know, I have run. I believe what was it last year? I ran a chocolate milk mile. So you're oh, saying this so, is nothing so, so, yeah. But yeah. I don't think it was. I don't think it was a full gallon. Okay, you're dancing around it. Full... Right, before we go, oh, we got you one. Are you willing to say? You gotta give us the you gotta give us who you the national championship. No, final four, final four. You will do, no, 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 national championship, national championship. It's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. Let's okay. Be for If you if Purdue wins the national championship, formerly ranked number one. You will do the milk. I may be rooting for Purdue. now. I'm rooting for Purdue. I'm in a jersey right now. Stand on business. You said it. If Purdue wins the national championship, yeah, I'll do it. No, 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 you'll do what? You'll, do what? you'll do what? You'll do what? You'll do what? If the University of Purdue with Zach Eady's big ass <laughs> wins the national championship, I, Kamran Marathi, solemnly swear to run the milk mile. Boiler ball, baby. Woo! Boiler ball. Boiler ball. <laughs> so it is written. So, so it is written. So so it is written. So 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 it is what a way to end the Monday show. What a happy, man. You, happy you return always, for spring break. Him, it's it's kind of nice to be on the other side of this. Now, <laughs> <laughs> now you know. Now you know how crazy we thought you were. When yeah. you no, but his is so much is easier than yours because yours was if they don't do something. His is if they do. Hold uh, on, that's so much harder. Hold yeah. on. Yeah. 
don't even know why I'm worried. Purdue sucks. Like, I don't <laughs> yeah, even know why I'm worried. Honestly, yeah, I'm Purdue. So I'm worried. Purdue. Yeah, but this, is, this, this challenge is way worse. I was waiting for the that to click. The challenge is worse. The challenge is way worse. I would so much rather do that than shave my head. Oh, the shave of the head was amazing. It was actually In retrospect, it actually turned out amazing. Yeah, I knew it was going to turn out. It did turn out. I'd say 2020. Milk bottle is not going to be amazing. No, no, that's gonna be fun. I wonder if this is like this is like this is like this is like in Doctor Strange where it's like well, how many how many scenarios tape, do we have so, nah, one. <laughs> what a way to end. What yeah, yeah. what a gallon? A gallon. That's a lot of liquid, bro. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, but you have a good time. I, I mean, look, okay. Purdue. I honestly have them probably not even making the elite eight. So so lucky. We'll see. Well, I cannot wait to celebrate when they lose. We'll see. Well, wait. when we're back, March Madness will be underway, at least for some of us that are here on only the Monday show and then hopefully on the Friday show. We'll, when we're back, March Madness will be starting. The first games are this Friday for men's, and I believe for women's also the first games yes. are on, on Monday. SC I mean, Women's Friday. Saturday. On, baby. I mean, yeah, SC Women's Ju-ju. Saturday, 1.30 at Galen. We got to keep you updated on that. Ju-ju. I will be there. Ju-ju. Yeah, Ju-ju. Get to Corpus Ju-ju. Christi, baby. I, Corpus Christi. Is it still, is it still free? Nope. <laughs> the tickets aren't free. No, I, I think the student section. Going. Student section. Oh, it students, is? I think the student, I think student section's got to be free. Wait, wait, we can. Hey, okay, we'll, we'll worry about this later. That's all the time we have. Fight on. Fight on. Fight on.